Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto unleashed an unrivaled power? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Naruto just realizing what happened desperately tried to grip one of the rocks but to no avail. Falling he realized, I'm going to die here, he thought closing his eyes. Naruto opened his eyes to see himself standing in a sewer, he heard a low growl and followed it. He came to a large cage with large red eyes staring back at him. Welcome to my humble abode Naruto to what do I owe this visit, stated the large eyed figure. You. You made my life a living hell if never attacked Konoha I would have had a better life, but I'm stuck with you damn fox. Wow hey calm down for when I didn't attack your village I attacked a man named Mujo or Orochimaru that's what he calls himself, and to my name is Kazuma not Fox or Kayubi. So if that's true then you being sealed inside of me was a mistake and if you're not Kayubi no Kitsune then who are you? Like I said I'm Kazuma no last name but better than tell you who I am I'll show you. With that the water at Naruto's feet surrounded him. Memories of a boy no older than 15 with brown spiky hair using an amazing red and gold armored arm flashed before Naruto's eyes. That was you but how did you become a fox? I don't know but but Alter has something to do about it. What's Alter? Asked Naruto. It's the ability to take matter from around you and form it into something else but you can't use it, you have to be born with it. So it's like a keke jenke. Yes but with a twist it's different from person to person but you're an exception since my ceiling you now have the ability to use Alter. Your chakra isn't something that where I come from have and on top of that your chakra has an affinity to darkness that makes everything more difficult. So I can use alter but I'm not supposed to be able to use alter now what happen if I use my alter Kazuma? My guess would be that your body will change to accommodate your new alter powers probably nothing too serious though. So what will my alter be? Right now whatever you want it to be but it will be morphed by your chakra but right now is your first lesson if you want us to live use it now. Naruto sapping back to reality saw the ground coming closer and closer. Acting on pure instinct he thrusted his right arm punching the ground which burst into nothingness sending him flying into the air back up from the cliff he was pushed from. Making a perfect landing, he stared at his arm in disbelief. His arm was now covered in black armor, a, n. Starting from the fist up and no it isn't Chad's arm from bleach just so you can't tell me that I'm coping off of Chad this is all my idea. The fist was pitch black with four silver spikes in the center of the fist and talon like nails at the tip of each finger. The wrist had a silver guard. The armored forearm that hugged to the shape of his muscles up to the elbow where there was a curved blade like elbow guard. The armor from the elbow up hugged the shape of the muscles till it hit the shoulder. From the shoulder stretched a thin strip of armor till it hit the same spot on the back with three pillars coming out. Naruto stared and the only thing he could say was, wow. Just as Naruto was about to leave Jiraiya came running up. Hey kid you were supposed to access Kayubi's chakra in order to summon a toad what happened? Don't even get me started pervy sage for one Kayubi has no chakra, for two you almost killed me, and three I now know why I had such crappy chakra control so summoning a toad should be no problem. Naruto said scraping his left thumb taking the blood rushed through the hand seals then slammed his armored palm to the ground to have a toad the size of Jiraiya appear shocking Jiraiya. H. How did you do that and what is that armor? shouted Jiraiya. I told you that my chakra control was horrible for a reason this is why this is my altar. Naruto said holding up his arm. As for what it does it's like a keke jenke I've had this power since the day Kayubi or should I say Kazuma was sealed inside of me and only I can use it. Naruto said and not even a second after finishing his sentence his arm began to give off dark light. He gripped his arm in pain before his world went black. Naruto once again found himself in front of Kazuma's cage completely in a daze looking up to Kazuma. What the hell just happened? That pain? Was that part of my altar? Naruto asked. No, your body just started to change to adapt to your new altar power, think of it like this your body is making itself better. Outside of Naruto's mindscape both the nurses and Jiraiya watched Naruto's body leak a rainbow aura. Then his muscles expand then collapse on themselves. This kept repeating and the sound of breaking bones made the nurses sick. 
But how long will that take my match with Neji is tomorrow and I plan on being there. Relax little dude your body should stop changing by morning, but that's not what you should be worrying about. Why? I was looking at your chakra and compared it to everyone else we have passed and so far you're the only one with dark chakra. Dose that mean I'm evil? No that just means you have a hidden past that's all. So you're telling me that my family might have been a clan? Yes but I killed many people in self-defense but if I killed your family I'm sorry. Kazuma said tears falling down his face as he went into a full sob. Could you ever forgive me Naruto? Kazuma you I do not blame, I blame Orochimaru for that and from this day forward I swear I will kill Orchimaru and regain our honor. He wronged us both but revenge isn't the answer. I have a different motive my family might be gone but he hurt two of my best friends and that I can never forgive him for especially what he did to you. Thank you Naruto thank you, but one more thing I want to know what's the deal with my altar? For starters you can bend darkness to shroud anything in darkness that nothing can see through at will. Second using your chakra you can use dark bullets but only three each pillar on your back represents a bullet that's all I guess. Thank you Kazuma I'm going to catch some sleep so good night Kazuma. Good night Naruto. Kazuma said as Naruto vanished. Naruto's eyes shot open to see the darkened walls of his hospital room. He looked around to see Jiraiya soundly sleeping in the chair next to the bed. Naruto wondered how he had got here but then realized that it must have been Jiraiya that had brought him here. Naruto was thankful that his sensei tough he was a huge pervert that he cared about him. He proceeded to get out of bed just to use the bathroom but the second he stood up he fell face first onto the floor waking Jiraiya in the process. That was unpleasant. Naruto stated standing up but almost fell down again if Jiraiya hadn't have caught him. Jess kid you cause trouble wherever you go don't you? You have no right to talk pervy sage at least I don't peek on women at the hot springs. Naruto stated as he regained his footing and taking a few steps. Well at least you're okay kid you had us scared for quiet a while just what the hell happened to you? I'm not sure myself but everything seems smaller now. Naruto said gaining a laugh from Jiraiya. Nothing got smaller kid you got taller look for yourself. Said flipping on the hospital room light. Naruto looked into the mirror and what he saw shocked him. His once sun blonde hair had a tint of brown to it. He saw that his face no longer had any baby fat to it. His whisker birthmarks had grown darker and thicker. His eyes drifted to his torso to notice he had no shirt on but he was basically ripped and he was indeed taller. The seal on her stomach was completely visible which freaked him out. I don't know what the hell happened to me but I like my new look. Naruto said trying to put his shirt on but couldn't. Well looks like you need some new clothes kid. Jiraiya said laughing then proceeded to say. Put this on we'll go shopping for clothes right now. He stated throwing Naruto his jacket. Naruto looked at the clock and yelled. At 4.30 in the morning what kind of store is open now? Wow kid, keep it down I know a place plus it's the day of the Chunin exam finals every store in the shopping district will be opening shortly, stated Jiraiya walking out the door. Naruto and Jiraiya entered the shopping district and just as he said stores were opening booths were being put up. They kept walking until Jiraiya stopped at a ran down looking building with the name Higurashis. As they entered Naruto stopped in amazement. The inside was nothing like the outside rows of ninja attire and weapons could be seen. Naruto walked up to the counter to see no one there. He saw a bell then proceeded to ring it, but when he did it rung, but it was completely crushed. Then a feminine voice reached Naruto's ears, coming, was heard as a girl with brown hair done up into buns came to the counter. Tenten it's good to see you again, Naruto said receiving a questioning look from Tenten. I'm sorry do I know you? She asked, it's me Naruto the ONR who has to fight Neji in 5 hours. He said as Tenten slapped herself on the forehead. Sorry I didn't recognize you, you look so different now what happened? She asked trying to hide her blush. I can't tell you yet but when did you get another job? Naruto asked. Oh I don't it's my dad's store I help out now and then but what did you need? Oh I need some new clothes so I'll talk to you after I'm done okay. Naruto said as he rushed over to the clothes section. Naruto began to think about something orange when Kazuma's voice rang through his head. No Naruto nothing orang it's an eyesore get something cool, Kazuma yelled. Okay I'll look but I'm so used to orange that it's hard to choose. Naruto went through a few ales and found nothing, but then something caught his eye. 
It was a black jacket with red interior with armor like metal going down the left arm from the shoulder to the elbow. But it looked like the one Kazuma wore but a little longer in the back. As Naruto took it off the rack but the plastic hanger broke in his hand. Wow this is the second time this has happened and it's only my right arm that does this, he thought to himself. He got the jacket but he didn't stop there he chose a mesh armor, a, n. It's like chain armor that you can wear under your clothes, five blood red skin tight shirts where the sleeves ended at the forearm, and five pairs of ambu grade pants. As he left the changing room he saw Jiraiya in the girls section giggling and writing things i a notebook. Hey pervy sage get out of the girls ale, Naruto said loud enough so Tenten could hear him. Her reaction was to throw a kuni at him. Naruto proceeded to go to the checkout counter and paid for his items when he spotted two fingerless gloves behind Tenten on the wall. One was black with black pieces of metal on it, the other was black with a red seal on the palm. Hey Tenten what are those gloves for? He asked, those are a set of gloves my dad made the right one is for channeling chakra releasing or elemental affinity and the other can store weapons or supplies but nobody wanted them. How much are they I'll take them? He stated making Tenten smile she told him the price and he paid for them on the spot. So Tenten who are you rooting for? I don't know but I still think what Neji did to Hinata was wrong but he is still my friend but I do wish you luck Naruto, she said giving him a small smile. Well Tenten I'll see you later, Naruto said as he left with Jiraiya. As soon as they walked out Naruto ripped the right arm sleeve of his new jacket clean off. Jiraiya looked at Naruto and smiled. So Naruto what do you say about being my apprentice? Naruto looked at him stunned but the first words out of his mouth was, Yes pervy sage I would like to be your apprentice. Then Jiraiya pulled out a piece of paper and handed it to Naruto. Pump some chakra into it then we'll know what element I need to train you if it's fire it will turn to ash, water it will become wet, earth it will crumble, wind it will slice in half, lightning it will crinkle. Naruto began to flow his chakra into the paper but it did something unexpected. The paper went pitch black then it sliced in half then turned to ash. This made Jiraiya almost faint. What does it mean when it turns black pervy sage? Naruto asked acting stupid. Naruto who were your parents? Jiraiya asked straight away. I don't know I've been alone all my life with the old mons help I got an apartment at 7. Naruto stated. Come on kid we're going to see Serutobi. Naruto didn't ask question he just followed. Jiraiya went bursting through into Serutobi's office doors receiving a shock from Serutobi. My my, Jiraiya to what do I owe this visit, Serutobi asked. No games sensei I want the truth who were Naruto's parents, Jiraiya asked making Serutobi drop his pipe. Alright I'll tell you but why the interest, Naruto did something he shouldn't be able to do watch. Jiraiya said as he handed Naruto another piece of paper. He pumped chakra into it and the same thing happened again in which Serutobi was stunned. So who were they sensei and no holding back, I didn't want to tell Naruto so soon and you were away for so long Jiraiya that I never told anyone Naruto's parents were Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki, he stated when Naruto slammed his fist onto Serutobi's desk ultimately busting it in two. Why old man? Why didn't you tellme? Naruto shouted scaring Serutobi. It was for your own good Naruto Minato had a lot of enemies and I didn't want you to get hurt. That still doesn't take the pain away you've lied to me all this time and I was hated for something out of my control what if people knew wouldn't my life have been happier instead of the living hell I suffered? Naruto said crying tears falling down his face. I'm sorry Naruto but since you know now there is no hiding it your full heritage will become public knowledge and you will receive your inheritance. This made Naruto madder and he ran for the door tears falling down his face. I leaving and don't follow me, Naruto yelled. Should I go after him sensei? Asked Jiraiya. No give the boy time to think. Okay just one more thing sensei I've taken Naruto as my new apprentice. Just don't overdo his training Jiraiya and don't turn him into a pervert. Like I would just watch Naruto's match closely you'll see something interesting, with that Jiraiya vanished. Naruto ran to his training ground still sobbing heavily when he heard a faint noise it sounded like a voice. He spun around to see none other than Hinata Hyuga slowly and timidly coming toward him. WH, what is Ro, wrong Naruto? She asked shyly, sorry Hinata I'm crying I must look like a total loser. Never, she shouted, you are no, not a loser Naruto, 
she stated pulling him into a hug in which he couldn't stop crying. A few moments passed and she released Naruto from her hug. Thank you Hinata I needed that. N, no pro, problem Naruto. She said blushing. You, you don't have to tell M, me B, but why W, were you crossing, crying? I've just found out that I have been lied to my entire life by none other than the Hokage himself. Naruto stated throwing a rock at a tree. He shouldn't have kept it a secret he should have told me. Tall, told you wa, what? That my father was the fourth Hokage, he said hearing a gasp from Hinata. We, oui. well I'm Su, sure he had high, his reasons, she said quietly. He said it was to keep me safe so enemy assassins wouldn't kill me for revenge. We, oui. well I'm GLA, glad he did or the Uthaper, person I car, care the most for woe, wouldn't be, be here. She said blushing a new shade of red after realizing what she had said. Thank you Hanada that means a lot to me to know someone cares about me, he said as he hugged her. Hanada smiled happily before she stared coughing he let go of her and she fell to the ground coughing harder and harder till blood was visible on the ground as she fainted from the strain. Naruto scooped her up bridal style and took her towards the hospital as fast as she could. He burst through the doors of the hospital like a hurricane had hit it. Someone get help now she just fainted from coughing up blood. Naruto shouted as a doctor ran up to her and took her pulse. Get her to the EMERGANCY room stat she going into CARDIACK arrest, the doctor shouted. Naruto tried to follow them but they said he had to wait outside the operating room. It was 8.30 in the morning and his day was already tragic. Naruto paced worrying that Hinata would die for an hour before a doctor came out. Good news she made it but there is a problem. What? Naruto shouted. Her here is still recovering from an almost fatal wound to the heart made by a concentrated chakra burst. Is she awake? Yes she came to about 10 minutes ago. May I see her please? He asked hoping he would say yes. Right this way sir, said the doctor leading him to Hinata's room. Naruto walked into the room and almost wanted to cry. He saw Hanada hooked to a heart rate monitor and IV tubes going through her arm and nose. He sat right next to her, hey you're awake I'm so glad, he said happily. D, did you Bree, bring me here na, Naruto? She asked weakly. Yes the second you fainted. Duh, thank you Naruto, she said trying to sit up. Wow there don't strain yourself, Naruto said helping into sitting position. Hanada began to shiver so Naruto took off his jacket and wrapped it around Hanada. Hold on I'll be right back with another blanket for you. Hanada gripped Naruto's jacket and smiled. She had wondered why he looked different but then she brushed it aside because he just looked handsomer in her eyes. Naruto walked out into the hallway to look for a doctor only to see Shikamaru standing there. Hey Shikamaru what's up? Naruto shouted Shikamaru went bug-eyed when he saw Naruto. Is that you Naruto? The one and only anyways have you seen a nurse or a doctor? No but I am looking for Choji he ate too much barbecue and ended up here, said lazily walking down the hallway with Naruto. They were searching for a doctor when they pasted Rock Lee's room to see a red-headed boy with a gourd on his back covering Lee in sand. Gara was about to succeed when he froze and could move. He slightly moved his head to see Shikamaru using his shadow P-O-S-E-S-I-O-N-J-U-I-T-S-U -S -S on him. Then Naruto came in with a right hook sending Gara into the wall as well as Shikamaru into the other wall. Naruto I've got him if you hit him I feel it too. Why do you interfere? Asked Gara. Why do you attack an injured person? Naruto asked. Simple I kill to prove I exist I love only myself and live to kill that all came to be clear when I was 6 years old when my father sent my uncle to kill me for I became a threat for having the Shikaku sealed in me before birth killing my mother, he said. So you are like me only stuck in the darkness you can be free life is what you want it to be not what you make it about to be. Shut up make me feel alive. He screamed as San shot towards him and Shikamaru. But it was cut off by my Jia. Save the fighting for the finals. Jia as Gara walked out promising to kill them. Naruto remembering Hanada ran out of the room and got a blanket from the nurse and ran to Hanada. Hanada greeted him the second he walked to the door. Then. Thank you Naruto for everything. I should be thanking you for comforting me the way you did. Naruto looked at the clock and saw that it was 10 o'clock. He bolted up and put on his jacket. Hey Hinata after you're out how about I take you to dinner? He asked. 
Hinata looked down blushing madly. I would like that. She said sweetly, I have to go I've got the finals but I'll come right back here when I'm done I promise. With that he left heading for the stadium while Hinata wished him luck. Naruto ran to the stadium at full speed which turned out to be very fast for him he made it but he was stalled as the guards would not let him in. Halt state your name rank and reason for being here, said the masked Anbu guard. Naruto Uzumaki here for the finals. You look nothing like Naruto so beat it, stated the cat masked man. Naruto growled then remembered what he had done yesterday. He positioned himself then punched the ground in which Naruto went flying but said one last thing. Next time it will be worse than itching powder in your masks. He yelled as he made his way towards the center of the arena landing on his feet skidding in a circle through the dirt. Genma as well as a certain portion of the crowd were amazed but none more so than Serutobi and Jiraiya. What is your name and businesser? asked Genma, Naruto Uzumaki and I'm here to kick that bastard's ass, he said pointing at Neji. Very well for the ones who are not participating in the first round please leave the grounds, yelled Genma. First match in the Chunin exam finals Naruto Uzumaki vs Neji Hayuga begin. The two stood still glaring at each other hatefully till Neji broke the silence. You should forfeit as fate has chosen me to win this match. Like I'd quite I made a promise and I'm going to keep it. Very well your death shall be in vain. Neji said as he rushed at Naruto. Naruto quickly made five shadow clones and stood back. Hey Kazuma what do I do? Make six more clones stand back and gather chakra into your right glove and punch trust me it will work. Naruto did as he was advised and the second he punched a wave of dark light sought at Neji. But it failed as Neji spun around chakra surrounding him and blocked Naruto's attack. Your attempts are futile as I have you in my range. Neji said as he began to use gentle fist style 64 palms. Naruto fell to the ground after the vigorous assault then Neji told the proctor that it was over. It's not over till I'm dead so fight me. You're destined to fail as fate is on my side and I'll tell you why. Stated Neji telling Naruto a big sob story of his life. So you think you're the only one with a seal you can't get rid of I hold a burden far greater than you so what you thought fighting Hinata was a way to get back at the main branch she almost died from heart failure today if it wasn't for me she would be dead because you hurt her and I can never forgive you for that now witness my keke jenke d-a-r-k-n-e-s-s-f-a-l-l-s be reborn. Naruto said as chunks of earth disappeared and his right arm began to glow in black light he held his right arm forward as it split into three separate parts and then were forced back together with black rings then the mist started to form armor. See chapter 1 if you don't know what it looks like, and finally three pillars appeared on high back. Neji was shocked shitless ass was Serutobi who sat next to the Kazakage who was secretly Orochimaru in disguise was now having second thoughts about Sasuke being his next vessel. So the boy can use Alterha I'll take it for my own soon enough. So you made your arm change it still cannot beat my Baikugan for you are destined to fail. Naruto rushed forward at Neji punching him in the face. Fate has nothing to do with it you're just hiding from the truth that you tried to murder Hinata I'll show you fate does not exist. Naruto said punching the ground taking flight. Naruto flew to a height that he didn't think possible then started to descend spinning once around a pillar on Naruto's back slammed into him and his arm shined with black light as he yelled, blackout first bullet. At the last second Neji performed his ROTAITION but it failed when Naruto impacted. Neji was thrown into the stadium wall and fell face first onto the ground. Naruto kneeled down to Neji as he said, how fate chose me to win yet you beat me. I told you there no such thing as fate so get over it you choose how you live and what you do but don't hide behind lies just as you did as you fought Hinata she fought to change and she did now you should thank me for not killing you, Naruto said walking away. Genma looked at Neji and said, a caged bird will learn to free itself a soar through the air. Winner of round 1 Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto made his way back to the stands to be greeted by Sakura, Ino, Lee, Shikamaru, and Kakashi. Naruto that was amazing what was that thing? Sakura asked curiously. That was my keke jenke it's called alter I'm the only person with this power as of now but each alter is different from person to person and only those born with it can use and pass it on to their children I unlocked it yesterday while training but I call this darkness falls, he said holding up his right arm. Well at least you won the odds were against you and you beat them you are one troublesome person Naruto. Shikamaru said in his normal lazy tone. 
Well you are really Konoha's number one most unpredictable knucklehead ninja, Kakashi said taking his eye away from his book. Then Lee approached Naruto gripping his crutches. Naruto you have done something I could not I'm so happy yet I'm so jealous of you why am I so weak compared to you why am I such a loser? Lee said crying gripping his crutch so hard that his wound opened up. Wow Lee calm down you are in no word loser and you will never be one as long as you work hard towards your dream. Naruto said gaining a smile from Lee. Just as Naruto was about to sit two Anbu black op guards appeared in front of him in a swirl of leaves. Naruto Namikaze your presence is needed by the Hokage now, said a bird masked Anbu. Hearing this Kakashi did something unthinkable, he dropped his book, he looked at Naruto in shock. Nah, Naruto you're my sensei's son. You're not the only one shocked about it I found out today myself I'll tell you when I get back. Naruto said disappearing with the Anbu. Seconds later Naruto found himself in front of Serutobi in the case cage but something was off about him but Naruto couldn't put his finger on it. Naruto your display out there was amazing as Hokage and leader I officially pronounce you or a chunine, he said handing Naruto a vest. Hey old man why am I being promoted now all I did was used my new keke Jenke. I didn't much other than kick Neji's ass which he had it coming, Naruto said taking the vest. That may be so but you also showed understanding of how to use your elemental affinity so that is why I am appointing you Chunine, Serutobi said smiling proudly. Yes your performance out there was quite the entertainment you deserve your title young Namikaze, said the case cage aka Orochimaru. Something wrong about this guy but I don't know what you got anything Kazuma, asked Naruto. I've got no idea at the moment but he does seem familiar to me. Naruto brushed it aside and asked one simple question, since I'm now Chunin am I allowed to leave the stadium? Yes Naruto you are but why may I ask why, Serutobi asked curiously. I'm going to go see Hinata in the hospital, he said looking down with a glazed look in his eyes. Well be on your way don't leave her waiting also be in my office tomorrow so we can register your Keke Jenke into the Konoha's clan registry, Serutobi said sending him off. You a kind man Hokage but you seem to growing senile you should pronounce an air, said Orochimaru grinning evilly under his mask. Thank you for the concern but I plan on retaining my position as Hokage for a few more years, said Serutobi realizing that he was not talking to the case cage but his former student. Naruto was on his way to the hospital when he thought he should bring her flowers, he knew of one flower shop but he always feared going in the Yamanaka flower shop. Naruto walked inside feeling a little uncomfortable but he let a sigh of relief when he that Ino would be at the finals watching Shikamaru. He began looking through the flowers trying to pick the one Hinata would like something that told her he cared when he realized he cared deeply for her more than his feeling for Sakura could ever go. Why do I feel this way about her this feeling is so foreign to me and my chest feels so warm when I think of her, he thought to himself when he stopped at a lavender flower that was absolutely beautiful it looked like snail coming out of its shell. N. I know it doesn't sound beautiful but believe me if you saw it you'd be surprised, it fit her perfectly as he picked it up as he went back into a daze of thought. Could this feeling be love? He thought when a slight blush crossed realized his face. The flower you're holding is called a Phasalus caracalla or the snailvine flower, said a voice when Naruto turned around he saw a woman that looked like Ino only she had green eyes. Thank you I'm not good with flower names but I'd like a bouquet of these please? Naruto asked the politely as he knew how. Right away, but you look familiar do I know you? I'm one of Ino's old classmates Naruto Uzumaki. So that's why you looked familiar anyway that will be 2360 yen. Naruto paid the money with glee as she handed him the bouquet. Wait a second aren't you supposed to be at the finals right now? She asked curiously. I was until I was promoted to Chunin by old man Hokage himself he said receiving a gasp from the clerk. If I may be so bold to ask who are the flowers for? They're for a friend in the hospital well I've got to hurry so see you, Naruto said as he jetted out the door to the hospital. He arrived to the hospital several minutes later and got permission from the receptionist to see Hinata. He arrived at the door to hear an angry male voice that sounded directed at Hinata. You have shown me that you are indeed too weak for our clan and a disgrace to the name Hyuga from this moment on I pronounce you disowned as my daughter and disbanded from the Hyuga clan, said the voice as the door opened revealing none other than Hinata's father Hiyashi Hyuga. Naruto's blood began to boil at what he just heard from him, 
He was her father for God's sakes and he just disound her. Naruto felt something he hadn't felt since he was in wave. Fury overwhelming anger and one thing THT scared him blood lust. Out of my way whelp. Hiyashi said pushing aside. I am many things HIASHI2 forgiving is one but what you just did was unforgivable and if you hurt her I won't hesitate to kill you. Naruto said turning around his eyes were not his ocean blue but blood red with slits in them and the killing intent coming from him would make the Shikigomi shit himself. Seeing Naruto Hiyashi just about shit himself he saw the opportunity to leave and he took it. Naruto calmed down and ran into Hinata's room to see that she was crying heavily. Naruto ran to comfort her pulling her into a caring hug letting her cry into her shoulder. It seemed to last forever his shoulder was completely drenched in from her tears. Naruto just continued to hold her lovingly as she began to calm down. Meanwhile back at the stadium it was down to the last match Konkuro had forfeited leving Shikamaru and Tamari's match but in the end after Shikamaru had her where you wanted her he forfeited. Leaving Sasuke and Gara's match. Sasuke had almost been disqualified until he and Kakashi had arrived in a swirl of leaves. A. N. If you're wondering where Sasuke was he was at the hospital getting a check up so he could partake in the finals. So Genma began the match the two stared each other down before Gara spoke. Me nor mother have any interest in you she wants Uzumaki's blood now die. Gara said as sending sand at Sasuke. Sasuke charged at Gara that could match Lee without his weights. He managed to get through Gara's ultimate defense hitting him a few time before Gara got serious. Large amounts of sand came erupting from the earth surrounding Gara into a dome. Sasuke seeing he couldn't break the dome he ran up the stadium wall stopping long enough to make a few hand seals then slamming his right hand onto the wall then running at full speed towards Gara. As he was running lightning gathered in Sasuke's hand. He rushed at the dome dodging the spikes and hit the dome but he couldn't breach all the way through. He looked down to see his feet were being held by sand. He struggled to break free but could not. But that wasn't the least of his problems as a demonic arm made of sand erupted from the dome grabbing Sasuke then throwing him into the stadium wall. As the dust cleared Gara stood there with his body covered in sand making him look like a raccoon. Like I said Uchiha you don't intreast me, he said as there was an explosion in the Hokage's box. Back with Naruto and Hinata. Hinata had completely calmed down and was now looking at Naruto lovingly. Realizing who she was being held by she quickly pulled away blushing as red as a tomato. So, sorry na, Naruto. Naruto who was now blushing also smiled and said, it was no problem you comforted me now I did the same, oh these are for you. He said handing Hinata the flowers. Th. Thank you Naruto. She said holding the flowers then her head dropped. What's wrong Hinata? I have nowhere to go now I have no family or reason to live I'm useless she said starting to cry again. Hanada you are not useless you are one of the strongest people I know and you do have somewhere to go you can live with me if you like? He said getting a warm smile from Hanada. Why do you care about me so much I'm not Sakura and I'm not pretty either. Hanada you cared about me when no one else would even care to look at me or even acknowledge me or me anything for my birthday like you have. Ho, oh, how did you know, now that wa. Dot was me. I saw you running away from my apartment from my window and you were beautiful Hinata. You're even prettier than Sakura. Plus you care about how I feel and don't hit me when I do something wrong or if I say something stupid. Naruto said looking at Hinata with a loving smile on his face. What I'm trying to say is that I'm in love with you. Hinata's looked completely shocked and blushing madly. She had been waiting for so long to hear those words for so long. Tears were rolling down her face. For so long. Huh? What do you mean? For so long I've waited to hear you say those words? And now that you have I can tell you, I love you too. She yelled trying not to cry but failed but she didn't for long as Naruto brought her into a loving hug. Hanada stared into the man she loved eyes. If I were to die now I'd be happy. She thought to herself inching to his face till their lips met. Hanada was in a state of pure bliss as the passion in their kiss could be felt. The kiss deepened for the longing and passion took over. At this moment Hinata felt a piece of herself break away and a new one grow in its place. She would no longer be the shy timid girl who couldn't believe in her own abilities she would become brave and strong for him. They pulled away the Naruto compressed Hinata in a hug that was of their passion but it didn't last long as the door bursted open to reveal demonized Gara with the look of blood lust on his face. 
Uzumaki mother wants your blood, he yelled sending his arm at Naruto who took the hit trying to protect Hinata. Gara saw this and he thought it would make it feel so much better if he killed her it would break him. Sand began to surround Hinata pining her to the bee slowly beginning to crush her, she began to gasp for air but to no avail. Seeing this pissed Naruto off more than ever. Naruto raised his right arm and dark light began to engulf his arm and most of the sand trying to crush Hinata dissipated buying her a little time. D-A-R-K-N-E-S-S-F-A-L-L-S be reborn, Naruto yelled as his altar form to its black glory. That won't save you or the girl Uzumaki the sand will slowly crush her so you won't be lonely in the afterlife so die, he said as he thrusted his arm at Naruto. Naruto threw his altar full force at the incoming demonic arm when they impacted there was nothing left of that arm. With a blink of an eye Naruto was in front of Gara grabbed him then threw him through the window. Naruto followed him through the window to see that Gara's arm had regenerated this made Naruto growl. You can't beat me Uzumaki so die, he said trying to get Naruto in his sand coffin but to no avail he had punched the ground sending himself up in the air readying himself for his attack. Naruto positioned himself then spun himself to gain momentum then the first pillar on his back slammed into his back activating his first bullet. Blackout first bullet. He yelled as his fist collided with Gara's face sending him flying into a tree. Most of the sand on Gara had dissipated leaving his face showing this infuriated him as he called what seemed like an ocean of sand engulfed him making himself grow till a raccoon demon in its full glory. Naruto was fighting with everything he had but getting nowhere his last resort was his last two bullets. Naruto once again lunged himself in the air activating his second bullet as he yelled, blinding second bullet. It did nothing then he used his final bullet, engulfing final bullet, he yelled aiming at the demon's stomach. But it did nothing he failed he thought as he fell to the ground. He would die here not achieving his dream not being Hokage he could live with but then he realized he couldn't die not yet he had to save Hinata and protect Sasuke from Orochimaru and if he could kill him. These things ran through his head when something snapped inside of him. Gara, Shikaku had thought they had succeeded covering Naruto in their sand coffin but it exploded revealing Naruto but there was something different. His altar had changed it was now bigger it was till black but there was no hand it had a base that had a deep crater in it that had some sort of a device in the middle. Four blade like claws made the hand at the bottom. This part followed to the elbow the rest followed as a covering to the shoulder where a light bulb like device sat mask like armor covered his face from his ears to his chin. And a mechanical like dragon wing came from his back. This power I like it but there is more important thing to think about. He said looking at Gara with a new ambition in his eyes. His wing flapped down creating a gust lifting himself into the air. New tricks won't help you now Uzumaki, he yelled launching an air bullet at Naruto. Naruto didn't even flinch as it hit him. Naruto smirked as his arm began to suck up the shadows from all around him and sent it at Gara as he yelled, shadow shock bullet. All the sand on Gara melted away leaving him to fall to the earth. Gara hit the ground with enough force to make a small crater. Naruto descended to the ground right beside Gara when Gara asked in a weak tone, How are you so strong? Because I fight to protect the people that are precious to me not for my own selfish desires like you do I was once like you hated for something I couldn't control but then I got friends they saved me from my darkness you can still be the same you just have to make friends people you can trust and protect don't go back to the darkness or I'll have no choice but to kill you, Naruto said pointing his arm at Gara. Just then Konkuro and Tamari took Gara and fled. As they were fleeing Gara did something unspeakable, Konkuro, Tamari I'm sorry. Konkuro looked at Gara and said, don't worry about it. Naruto let out a sigh thanking heaven that it was finally over but that his arm started releasing dark light bring pain to Naruto's entire body then he blacked out. It had been a week when the terrible news struck the people of Konoha. The third Hokage had fallen at the hands of Orochimaru. But he didn't go without leaving his mark taking Orochimaru's arms with him. Later that day was the funeral Naruto was getting ready with a dead to the wood glazed look in his eyes when a knock came to his bedroom door. Naruto AR, are you okay? asked Hinata weakly as she had only been out of the hospital a day. Naruto who had finished changing ran to his bedroom door opened it to see Hinata wearing a black funeral dress with a black veil over her face. I'm fine honey, what about you how are you holding up? He asked covering his pain with his emotional mask. Hanada moved her veil partway and planted a kiss on his lips. 
She pulled away giving him a sad smile. Naruto ple, please promos me one thing? Naruto gave her a look that said, anything, promos me you won't hide your feelings during his funeral? I promos Angel please if I get out of hand calm me down. Hanada nodded as they left the apartment. They had made it to the memorial stone on top of the Hokage monument to see that the place was crowded. Naruto saw Kakashi waving at a spot at the front of the crowd so Naruto and Hanada made their way to him. A few minutes before the ceremony started a regular everyday civilian walked up to Naruto and said something that should have got him killed but since Serutobi had passed the law was now null and void but most of the Anbu still upheld the law since now they knew the boy's heritage. Hey demon what do you think you're doing here this is for people of Konoha not filthy demons. The second the man finished his speech Hai was dead by the hands of Kakashi. The ceremony had began and everyone starting with the shinobi population laid a white flower on his grave. Both Naruto and Konohamaru were in tears crying their souls out for Naruto he was like his grandfather for Konohamaru he was his grandfather. After an hour of people giving the man their respects a pair of anbu appeared in font of Naruto holding three jade boxes that were big enough to hold one scroll each, and something Naruto thought he would never see again, the forbidden scroll of sealing. Lord Namikaze these are rightfully yours as for the Hokage's wishes if anything happened to him. The birdmask nin said handing everything to Naruto and vanished in a poof of smoke. Just as they left Kakashi walked over to Naruto, hey Naruto go home I'll be over later to talk to you, but right now I have to find someone, he said disappearing in a cloud of smoke. Hanada and Naruto made their way hulling everything the Anbu had gave him. The second they walked through the door Hanada went to change but Naruto immediately opened one of the jade boxes which had to Naruto from Serutobi. He opened it and began to read it which shocked him to the system. Dear Naruto, if you are reading this I'm dead so I'm giving one last mission to fulfill and it's in sulfur monosulfide ranked. I'm sure you remember the weasel mask Anbu that saved you from mobs until you were seven. His name Itachi Uchiha, he was a double agent for me to spy on the Uchiha clan. You see the Uchiha clan was not too happy they couldn't turn you as a weapon so they started a planning a coup, Dita three days before their attack I ordered Itachi to kill them all but he could not so he asked a man named Madara Uchiha kill the clan but he didn't manage to get out of there in time as Sasuke showed up and Itachi made Sasuke to hate him hoping one day be killed by his hands. But this is where you come in sealed inside this scroll as a full pardon for his crime that it was labeled please Naruto bring him back and you will be paid a handsome amount for this mission thank you. Sincerely Sasuke Serutobi, right there Naruto swore a blood oath that he would bring Itachi back. Naruto opened the next jade box to find that this scroll was from his dad. Dear son, if you are reading this you are 16 or something forced Serutobi to give this to you. As you know I'm the fourth Hokage Minato Namikaze and your mother was Konoha's legendary red death Kashina Uzumaki. But sadly to tell you this I'm writing this right now because you will be an orphan your mother died minutes ago after giving birth to you. But what I'm about to do is unforgivable but I'm sure you'll understand. Before I go any further you might have Keke Jenke from your mother it's called the Necrogan it's a lot like the Sharingan and Byakugan it can copy techniques and see at a 360 degree angle and the chakra system in the human body. But it has three other things the Hyugas and Uchihases don't plus one that's like the Uchihas. For one it can control hellfire, two it can blow things up that don't have a chakra pulse, three it can increase your IQ to help you get out of dire situations like escaping death, and finally you can use a jutsu that can transport you and your enemies to a different dimension but this I do not recommend or ever use one it takes the reserves of an anbu to use it and two it can destroy your body. Now that is out of the way I want to tell you that you have three relatives one is by blood the other two I adopted after they lost everything. The first is your uncle Nazariu Usumaki the last of the Uzumaki clan or as he calls himself Nazariu Keita to throw off enemies. The second and third are your adopted brother and sister Kakashi Hitaki and Anko Midarashi. This is where I let you go Naruto you should have gotten another scroll sealed inside or my will the deed to the Namikaze, Usumaki estate and the deed to my fortune good luck son make me proud. Lots of love your father Minato Namikaze. At this point Naruto was in tears he just couldn't hold it back. Hanada hearing him ran to him comforting him as well giving him a long passionate kiss. He had finally clammed down when there was a knock at the door. Naruto ran to the door to see it was Kakashi and Anko. The second Anko saw the boy she fell to tears hugging him tightly. 
I can't believe you're alive I'm so happy to see that my baby brother is alive this is the happiest day of my life, she cried. It good to be your brother Anko and Kakashi, he said not trying to cry but then a serious look came to his, I have a favor to ask of you too, he asked. Anything, Kakashi and Anko said in unison, I need help moving me and Hinata into our new house, he said as Kakashi and Anko face felted. What the invitation is for you also he said as a huge smile appeared on their faces. As this was going on Jiraiya was sitting atop the Hokage monument scoping out Konoha for any leftover invaders when two of Konoha's council members Hamura and Kaharu approached him. Jiraiya you have been elected as the next Hokage do you accept? Hamura asked. No I'm too busy to be Hokage but there is another the slug Sunin Tsunade I will go search for her in four days. Very well Jiraiya we hope you are successful, Kaharu said leaving along with Hamura. With that Jiraiya left in search of Naruto. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Yes I can but it will hurt like hell for you man and now on to the next question, Kazuma said like a game show host. Well too is can I use alter power for anything else but darkness falls? He asked thinking he would get a no. Well that's out of the blue but yes if concentrated right eye why can be used to heal or if a piece of your altar is willingly broken off it stay like that until you die. And my final question is how did I activate stage 2 of my altar? Well that was out of sheer willpower you can do it again in 3 days but with me here you won't have the same conscience I had but it will hurt your arm but only use it as a last resort for now okay. Sure. But I do have a one more question I have an idea to make a sword for Hinata but I'm at a loss I have no idea how it should look. The next 4 hours they spent together throwing ideas together until they came up with a great idea. Hey it could look like my old friend Ryo's altar blade it cut and protect I think it would be great for her. You know you're right I'll go get a couple of molds made when I wake up oh and you can activate my keke jenke now. He said as he as he vanished from his mind. Kazuma could only laugh as how much Naruto was like him. Naruto woke up and glanced at his clock to see it was 5 a.m. Then he looked over at Hinata's sleeping form and decided he didn't want to wake her. So he got up and wrote her a note and change and left the estate ran off to the only shop he could trust the Higarashi weapon shop. Naruto walked inside to see an old man working at the desk. Naruto walked up to the counter and the man asked. Hello may I help you? Yes I need a couple of custom molds made by the end of today if you can? He asked as the man smiled at the challenge. Well what did you have in mind? The man asked as he pulled out a few pieces of graft paper and handed Naruto a pencil and Naruto started to draw. It started with two, two feet wide blades that decrease in width as they reached a full length 52 inches long. On the inside they curved upward to a point that a wrist and forearm holster could be placed. And at the back end of each blade there was a small mechanism that could connect the two together. A. N. Just so you know as your inscribed fan to think of the blade in Ryo's final altar form. Well that's quite the weapon there I'll start on it right away on one condition. Naruto gulped and thought he would have to do something very bad. Show it to me when you have finished it cause I would like to sell it here in my store I'll even split the profits with you. The man asked with a smile. Sure thing throw in a case for it and it's a deal how long will it take to make though? If I stat now about 2 hours 3 tops okay. The man said handing Naruto a bill which was 6236 yen. Naruto quickly paid for it and saw he was low on money. As soon as he left he ran to the only bank in Konoha that would let him in. As he arrived he unsealed the deed to his inheritance from his glove. He walked up to the clerk and showed her the paperwork which in return had to sign activation papers. And as soon as he was done he withdrew a handsome amount of money enough that he could live off of for two weeks. Naruto then from there ran to a supply store and picked up a few more items that he needed to finish Hinata's present. He sealed everything in his glove and left for his favorite training ground. As soon as he got there he decided that he would practice his necrogan. He sent some chakra to his eye which in his opinion was the worst mistake he ever made. His eyes felt like they were melting. The pain brought him to his knees and made him scream in agony till the left his conscious state to his mindscape. He once again appeared in front of Kazuma's cage. Kazuma what the hell just happened? Naruto yelled in anger. Hey I told you that it would hurt like hell but since I did something for you I want you to do something for me. And what would that be? Naruto asked in fear that it might kill him. I've done some research on your body and I found a way to give you my power of the other side but you have to rip the seal halfway off then if I'm right you will be able to summon me out for a while. So come on and rip that baby in half, Kazuma said as Naruto obliged and ripped it half of the seal off. But something unexpected happened. A golden energy shot from Kazuma to Naruto. The more energy Naruto absorbed the smaller Kazuma got until it stopped and leaving Naruto panting. Naruto made his way over to Kazuma's cage to see a man about 17 with light brown hair and wearing the same outfit he was. Kazuma is that you? Naruto asked in fear that that Kazuma had lied to him. Yeah why do you ask I'm the only 10 story tall fox in your mind. Yeah but you're not a fox now, Naruto said as Kazuma looked down to see he wasn't lying. Kazuma was yelling and jumping for joy as he was human again. After a few minutes he calmed down and walked over to Naruto. Wow Kazuma you really were human but you asked for two favors what's the seconded one? Naruto asked hoping it wouldn't cause him pain. 
Simple my friend I just wanted you to change the background in here a sewer gets really annoying after 13 years ya yeah, no. Well is there anything you had in mind? Naruto asked as he would do anything to repay him. Yeah I was thinking my old home if you can remember it? He asked then Naruto went into deep thought moments later the sewer began to disappear and a room began to form. It looked like an old abandoned dentist's office only made into a homely living room. Wow Naruto this is amazing it looks just like my old home. Kazuma said running around the house. But Naruto noticed the seal on his back that looked like the one on his stomach. Hey Kazuma that's not the only thing I did, Naruto said as he opened the door to see his old city his homeland the lost ground. Everything out there is real for you have fun Kazuma, Naruto said as he left his mindscape. Now back in the real world the pain was gone and he felt stronger for some reason, why do I feel stronger all of a sudden? He thought to himself as Kazuma's voice rang through his head. I can answer that when you absorbed my energy your body increased its chakra to equal everything out this is just a guess but I say your chakra level is low Anbu. Wow that's cool but I need to get in a little training in before I go pick up those molds. He didn't hear a response so he figured Kazuma was having fun. Naruto activated his necrogan and focused on a tree a few seconds later there was a boom and said tree was nothing but splinters. Next he looked at one of the dummies and imagined his fist on fire and sure enough his fists engulfed themselves in black flame. He punched the dummy and his hands went right through it leaving scorch marks. He was amazed at what he could do then he activated the Byakugan stage of his eyes and sure enough he could see for miles and that he spotted Hinata still in her blissful sleep. Naruto looked down at his shadow and judged by the angle that it was 6.30 so Naruto decided to train with his altar with a yell of, Darkness falls be reborn. He trained his ass off for the next half an hour. During that time he found out that he could combine his altar with his control of hellfire. When the time came he ran back to Higurashi's to pick up his order, when he got there the old man was at the counter with a huge smile on his face. Your order took less time to make than I thought and I can say this will be one hell of a weapon how long do you think it will take you to make? The man asked anxiously. Two days at the most and you'll be the first to see it, Naruto said with a sense of pride. Naruto left the shop and was walking home when he smelt his girlfriend's favorite food and ran to that stand. Three minutes later he walked away with a bag of freshly made cinnamon buns. Fearing they might get cold he activated his necrogan and imagined enough heat to keep them warm and that he could feel the bag warm up. Minutes later he arrived at home to see Kakashi and Anko sitting in the living room talking to each other until they say him walk in. Hey little bro you're up a little early aren't you? Anko asked in a playful tone. Yeah I had to run a few errands to run and to get a little training in for today that's all. He said as he was trying to walk away Kakashi walked up and looked into Naruto's eyes and said. Naruto what the hell is with your eyes? Kakashi asked pulling a mirror and held it up to Naruto's eyes for him to see his eyes. They were jet black and with a blood red shuriken like design in the center with each point pointing up down left and right. And at the tip of each point was a blood red tomo which freaked Naruto out a little but he hid it. This is my necrogan and I activated it yesterday but I really have to go three day and me and Hinata leave with Jiraiya. Naruto said shocking Kakashi and Anko but they didn't say anything even though he just lied about his keke jenke. Naruto ran up to his room to see Hinata was just waking up walked up and kissed her on her cheek and said, morning angel you sleep okay? He asked in a sweet voice receiving a nod seeing as she was not fully awake yet. I brought you a gift but I have to tell you now it'll be busy for the next two day in the forge but you can't peek at all what I'm doing it's a surprise for you and I hate to ruin that for you. He received another nod from her as she opened the bag she squealed and gave Naruto a long and existing kiss. After Naruto left he grabbed the scroll of ceiling and walked to the forge. As he walked in he say the place was still clean and looked like it was in working order. He activated his necrogan focusing on the forging tome it started up with black flame. Then he made five shadow clones and sent them to get Gobi's fang from the weapons vault and he walked to the storage closet to get some more supplies that he needed but this closet was the size of his old bedroom. And all around him were different types of metals and tools were there but the first thing that caught his eye was a shelf filled with metal bricks labeled, chakra metal. He used his necrogan to give him the information he needed about forging. As Naruto gathered the tools and metals, a, n. Ok this is where you'll say what the hell but don't next chapter which I hope to have up in two days with lots of action. He saw his clones had returned with the fang. 
Naruto dragged out a medium-sized forge cauldron and lifted the lid. He had his clones place the fang in first. Then Naruto placed three bricks of titanium, three bricks of chakra metal, and one brick of adamantium. Last Naruto focused his altar enough that our formed just the fist and one pillar on his back. Naruto reached up to pillar took hold of it then ripped it off and placed it in the cauldron. Then Naruto and his clones lifted the cauldron and placed it the tome and shut the flap to begin the melting process. Just at that moment a thought hit him where would she keep this weapon when it hit him. He had a glove that could store thing why can't anything else. He ordered a clone to go get one of Hinata's jackets and gave the clone his left glove after he unsealed everything inside and handed the clone a handsome sum of money. As the clone left Naruto heard Kazuma's voice ring through his head. Hey Naruto summon me out I feel useless in here I know a lot about how to put stuff together since I worked on a farm for years. Sure but just how do I do that? Just go through the seals for a regular summoning jutsu but no blood and finally say my name. Naruto did what he was told and sure enough with a yell of, Kazuma, and slamming his palm on the ground there stood Kazuma in all his glory. Well dude what are you standing there for let's get to work, Kazuma shouted. Yeah I'm going to have a clone help you out I'm going to give this thing more power by looking in this scroll for pointers. Naruto said sitting at the table because it would be three hours before they could use the liquefied metal so he plopped open the scroll. Now with the clone he had made it to the tailors with enough time to spare for he had only have an hour and ten minutes of chakra to sustain himself. He walked in to see a lady measuring fabric. The clone approached the lady as cautiously as possible when he was in range for her to hear him he finally spoke, um, excuse me miss can I get some help please? The lady turned around and smiled, how may I help you today? Yes I need a jacket just like this on made with this type of fabric base hopefully not leather, he asked handing her the jacket and the glove. She walked over to a female mannequin and measured the jacket. After she finished that she walked over to a desk opened a book and looked up the fabric type and found it immediately and laughed. Sir we have the fabric but not in the same color as that jacket do you still want it made? Yes what colors do you have, black, white, and lavender? I'll take the lavender color and if you could put the same seal on both sleeves just at the wrist? Sure, how many do you want made? three if you can. And that comes to 49,888 yen and they will be ready in two days. The clone paid for the jackets and grabbed the glove and jacket and he was off. Halfway back the clone saw a small jewelry store that looked like they were going out of business so he walked inside up to the counter and looked at some rings and just as he was about to leave he spotted a beautiful triangular emerald ring the gem being as big as a pea with little diamonds surrounding it and it was in a white gold surrounding. A. N. Thank my brother for this we went shopping and bought this same ring for his girlfriend. He knew she would love it so he got the clerk to tell him how much it was but he had a sad smile and said, thank you for choosing it but no one as of yet has been able to afford it, this got the clone's attention. How much? The clone almost shouted the man looked up and said, it's 99,776 yen, he said astonished. I'll take it. The clone shouted earning ear to ear smile as he had tears in his eye as the clone paid. Thank you sir you just saved our small business to show how much we owe you we'll size it for free. The man said as he pulled out a sizing set the clone performed the ram seal and with a poof his right hand was that of Hinata's. A. N. I've been thinking if they can transform their body to look different why not just one limb, he sized the ring finger and left and came back a few minutes later with said ring in a small indigo box. With that clone was off again for home. It ran through the side door so to avoid the living room. It ran directly to the forge to Naruto handing him the receipts and got yelled at. I only told you to go to the tailors. Good job you did exactly what I would do. Naruto said as he got a smile from the clone before it dispersed itself. Back with Naruto while we were with the clone he had learned four new jutsus. The first one was very dangerous for it was the blood clone it is a real flesh and blood clone when and only when it disperses itself you obtain both physical and mental memory say the clone get cut and disperses itself you get said cut. He made four blood clones and sent them to train his necrogan and alder for the day. Two, three and four were three very complicated seals the first one memorizes your chakra so that only you can use it if someone else tried to use it they wouldn't be able to pick it up due to you'll get 10,000 volts of electricity coursing through your body. 2 was a barrier cell that could block 5 high level jutsu or a supercharged attack then it had to recharge which took an hour. 
and finally a seal that got you in touch with your elemental affinities faster. Naruto once again relying on his necrogan began to scribble on a piece of paper trying to combine the three seals. After about an hour his effort bared fruit, he ha made a prototype and placed it on a kanai and threw another one on the ceiling he charged it with chakra and slashed at the kanai it sliced right in half. Next he handed a shuriken over to a clone and told it to throw it at him the clone threw it at him and a white barrier came to life into a dome that covered the entire body but didn't last as it craped out and his shoulder got a shuriken cut. He tweaked with it a little and tried the new seal out and it worked. Naruto's creative streak didn't end there he thought if he had Lil Chakra and was in two over his head he would need a weapon. He had brought some graft paper with him and stated to design his weapon after a half an hour of design he designed a new type of broadsword. It was held together with by little mechanisms and when released it would stretch a good 15 meters with a special metal coil his dad invented but never released to the public and finally in each of the six links there would be a small spring loaded blade that would release themselves on the backlash with a surge of chakra. A. N. Now I know what you people are thinking Zabameru right? Wrong Zabameru is alive this is not plus Zabameru is a halberd this is a broadsword so there. And while he had was designing that he came up with a device that could help you out in a jam. It was a claw launcher that used the same concept as the broadsword spring loaded tech and stretching alloy but only this time it could at least a mile and used the concept of chakra release and retraction as the broadsword but only one extra at the bottom of the three claws would be a small switch in which you could lock the claws together or unlock them. When extended its it sends a small pulse of chakra when it comes back it activates and opens its claws when locked it does not do that an, yes Zelda Tai Light Princess. With the help of Kazuma and Naruto's Necrogan he managed to design the mechanisms in each weapon. Naruto got out a message scroll from his pocket and wrote a note to Mr. Higurashi. Dear Mr. Higurashi, it's Naruto again I have two new designs that might interest you and I have a proposition for you. But need a mold of everything on these schematics so I'm sending you five of my strongest clones to help you and I'll be over a nine o'clock sharp to discuss my proposition. If you agree say so write your response in this scroll and give it back to the toad. Sincerely Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto made five blood clones and summoned a messenger toad and sent the sent them off with enough money to pay for the molds and gave the first clone the schematics and sent them off. Naruto looked at the clock he had brought with him and saw that he had a half an hour till he could use the metal so he ignited the second forging tome and mad five shadow clones and ordered them to load the second tome with another medium sized cauldron and filled it with chakra metal and andamantium and load it in the tome. Kazuma I'm going to go test this new seal hold down the fort okay. Sure thing buddy tell me how it goes. Kazuma asked receiving a nod from the blonde. Naruto stopped at the weapon vault first and grabbed a broadsword and an enbu grade katana. Using his new control over fire he engraved the seal on both blades and walked outside to see Kakashi training his taijutsu on a wood log. Hey bro where is sis and Hanada? Naruto shouted getting his attention. Anko took Hanada out to train and said something about killing a stutter why do you ask? I need someone to help me with a new invention of mine can you help me? Sure anything for family. Kakashi said giving Naruto one of his eye smiles. Naruto tossed Kakashi the Anbu blade and told him to mold his chakra into it and Naruto did the same and the he asked Kakashi to come at him with his lightning blade. He said no at first until Naruto told him, don't aim at me just the blade trust me you won't lay a scratch on it. He said two minutes later Kakashi charged at him with the lighting visible in his hand. Just before impact the white barrier once again came to life blocking the mighty jutsu till it faded away. Naruto what was that? That was the first part of my invention now it's time for you to see the second so use your blade to block this. Naruto said as he poured enough chakra into the blade to make a shadow clone and slashed. A whirlwind of black flame shot at Kakashi only to be blocked by the same barrier that protected Naruto. Well that was stage 2 it lets the user get in touch with his elemental affinities and last I bet you couldn't grab this sword's handle. Naruto said as he handed the blade over to Kakashi and he immediately dropped it from the pain of being electrocuted from it. Jess Naruto what the hell was that? Kakashi said a little pissed. That was 3 it memorizes you chakra and any foreign chakra signature gets shocked. I took 3 of the most powerful seals from the scroll I inherited from Serutobi and combined them. 
The first is the chakra memorizer from the first Hokage created before Konoha's founding same for the second the second Hokage made a seal to help activate his clan's chakra blood limit and the last is a barrier seal made by my father to protect his precious people but it can only be used five times before it has to recharge which takes an hour. Kakashi stated at Naruto wide eye. Naruto that was pure genus nobody has ever done this you'll be famous for it, Kakashi said. Naruto shook his head and said, no Kakashi not yet not for a few days I've got an idea but I need time to unveil it you can come with me tonight at Higurashi's tonight at 9 don't be late or you'll miss it oh and keep the sword no one but you can use it but you. Naruto walked into the forge to see the toad had returned and gave the scroll to him and he read it. Dear Naruto, I accept your meeting and your molds should be to you in two hours see you tonight. Kazuma looked up at Naruto and asked, how did it go? A success and now we can start the forging of Ryo's wings do you want to help? Hell yeah I do. Kazuma said as they put on their protective gear and got all four molds ready. Using their combined strength plus the help of two clones carefully poured the liquid metal into each mold. Naruto looked into the cauldron to see that it was still half full which made him smile for he would have enough for his blade. After the each molded piece of the weapon cooled they spent the next few hours smoothing and sharpening it but before the heated blade fully cooled Naruto placed the seal on both halves. Finally Naruto put the blade into a pail of water cooling them off completely. They continued to sharpen each piece to the point that they could cut another blade with ease. Just then the clones burst through the door with a tone of molds and placed them on the floor. Naruto looked at the clock and saw it was 8.30 so he told the clones at 9 start on the claw shot and his blade. Just before Naruto walked out of the forge he looked at Kazuma and said, same drill as earlier. Kazuma nodded then Naruto left. Just before he reached the front door he was greeted by Kakashi. Naruto gave him the gesture to follow him. After several minutes of walking they made it to Higurashi's without a hitch. Naruto knocked on the door and was then greeted by Tenten they made their way to the dining room to see the store clerk making tea. Would any of you like some tea? He asked receiving a nod from Naruto and a simple no from Kakashi. As the mood settled in Naruto broke the silence. Now down to business I'll have all three weapons tomorrow in the late afternoon I'll be able to show off my own personal blade and big bro here will show off his claw shot that I'm making for him. What about the twin connecting blades you came up with? The man asked. That is a gift to my girlfriend and she won't get that until tomorrow night. But here is my plan I don't want my creations to fall in the hands of enemy forces so I have created a seal that will bond it to the owner's chakra and no one else might touch it so this is where the seal comes in it links to the owner's elemental affinities and brings them out and it can cast a barrier to block even the most harshest attack but only five times then it takes an hour to recharge. So now my conditions for you selling my creations is that every one of them must have the seal and everyone who buys one has to show their ninja license and proof of Konoha citizenship no ninja that does not belong to Konoha may purchase one and finally every person who buys one must activate the seal right after they pay for it think of a no refund order. Naruto finished with the old man smiling like a madman. Sounds reasonable but how to want to split the profits? I'll take 45% you can keep the rest. Now that this is cleared up we'll take our leave. Naruto said as he and Kakashi left. Naruto those designs of your are brilliant how did you come up with them? Kakashi asked. Really I just wanted to make something to help protect Hanada and you and Anko but it got out of hand and I made a big commotion but it will get better I'll talk to you tomorrow, Naruto said running into the hours. He immediately ran for the forge to see everyone working hard. Ok Kazuma I need your help to get me to my room cause I'm low on chakra and I need to make more clones. Kazuma groaned and stood behind Naruto as he made his clones and not a second later he collapsed into Kazuma's arms. The next morning Naruto awoke alone in bed. So he got up did his morning routines and ran to the forge to see one clone left finishing up the last set for the five claw shots that were to be made and his blade was ready to be put together. Naruto made ten clones that would last the day and ordered them to finish the work on the weapons. While his clones finished the work Naruto walked to Ikraku Ramon's stand for his usual 20 bowls of Ramon then he ran to his training ground and trained for a few hours he trained with Kazuma in his altar and Necrogan. It was late afternoon when they quite Naruto ran home and pick up Kakashi and the weapons. And they ran for Higurashi's place to see him waiting. Ok we're here let's get this over with because I leave tomorrow and I've got a few errands to run. He said as he pulled out his blade. Naruto pulled out his newly made blade and faced the test dummies that Mr. Higurashi had set out. 
Naruto charged his blade activating the seal on it and swung it releasing the links and the blades cut through the left shoulder of the dummy. Naruto sent a surge of chakra into the blade releasing the spring-loaded blades. He jerked the snake-like blade back ripping the dummy to shreds before it linked itself back together. Mr. Higurashi began to clap but Naruto said to him, I'm not done yet, as he charged more chakra into the blade enough to make ten shadow clones and with a slash another whirlwind of black flame flew a new dummy and after it died down there was nothing left of it. Kakashi walked up to the next dummy and activated the seal on his claw shot and said, I guess it's my turn, he said pointing the claw shot at the dummy and with a click the claw shot at the dummy grabbing its head and it began to retrace taking the head with it. Well that's the most of it but there is one more feature to them ready bro, Naruto stated as he received a nod from Kakashi. Kakashi locked and pointed the claw shot at Naruto who was in a defensive position with his swords in front of him. With another click from the claw shot it launched at Naruto and just before impact a white barrier came to life and deflected the blow. At this Mr. Higurashi was clapping for he would now have popular weapon on sale in his shop. Those are some pretty powerful weapons what are their names? Naruto smile for he already knew the answer. This here is my razor maelstrom. The one big bro over there has is called the claw shot, and the first one I had you make molds for is called Ryao's wings. Naruto said as he walked up to Mr. Higurashi and handed him a folder which he got a confused look from the old man. In this folder it has more details on how to build them and how to put them together step by step and finally there is a copy of my seal and I'm only going to say this once anybody other than the Hokage ask for that seal do not let them have it or our deal is null and void. You have my word as an ex shinobi that no one will get this seal, he said as Naruto and Kakashi walked away. Father why are you crying? Tenton asked as she walked up to him. Because that boy right there just saved our shop from bankruptcy, he said tears falling from his eye full force. Naruto and Kakashi split ways at the bank. That when Naruto had an idea why not just get a gift for Hinata he had a family now he should get gifts for all of them. Naruto walked in and withdrew another hefty amount of money and was off. He made three shadow clones and split the money up between them. He sent one to the tailors to pick up the orders. He sent the next one to the supply store to pick up rations that could last at least a month and camping gear big enough for two in a tent for Jiraiya, and the last clone he sent to that little jewelry store to pick something up for Anko. Naruto went in search of Jiraiya as to where he found him right in front of the woman's section at the hot springs. Naruto knew Jiraiya had something Kakashi would die for and Naruto got just that the new hadn't been released yet Ik Ik Paradise but he had to bribe him with two things one he had to stop calling him pervy sage, and two was to give him one of his new designed weapons which he would have gave him anyway. With the clone at the jewelry store he was greeted with hugs and thank yous left and right until it stopped which made him sad. He browsed their goods when he found a perfect piece of jewelry for Anko. It was a kanai made out of a diamond hooked on a yellow gold chain. Um miss. The clone said getting the clerk's attention. How much is that one there? Again you have a good eye that one is 53,549 yen, she said. Wrap it up cause ill take it. The clone half shouted. The clerk left and a few moments later she returned with a purple elongated box with said necklace. He thanked her and left. Later that night the gang plus Jiraiya were sitting in the living room chatting and one this got Naruto. Hanada's stutter was almost non-existent. But the talking soon died down as Naruto started to make an announcement. Okay I just wanted to say Hanada, you know I love you so I got you a few gifts. He said as he unsealed three boxes one large one medium and one small. He handed them to her and she opened the small box first and she was in tears she tackled him down and kissed him passionate kiss. In which everyone else in the room was laughing. Hanada let go and opened the next box which mad her repeat her first action they were three lavender jackets like her old ones but these had the Uzumaki clan crest upon the sleeves. And the last one made Hanada confuse. The twin arm blade were a dark violet just like her hair. But it's not that she didn't like them, but why was Naruto giving her weapons? What you don't like them? It's not that I don't like them but why are you giving me weapons? She asked timidly. This is actually a joint weapon that I made to protect you from harm not only can the hurt but they also act like a shield to protect you and I also had those jackets made with the same fabric as my left glove and I had two special seals put on the sleeves so that you have easy access to them and as long as they exist I'm alive if they disappear well let's just hope they don't I'll even show you how they work, he said standing up holding up the blades. 
Hey Naruto that's very rude that you forgot about you big brother and sister? Anko said with a small pout. Who said I forgot Kakashi got half his gift and I'm about to give them to you before me and Kakashi show how these weapons work. Oh and Anko I made sure yours was extra sharp. He said unsealed three boxes and a wrapped rectangle he handed one box to Jiraiya and the rectangle to Kakashi and the last two boxes to Anko. Seconds later Anko had opened the first box and Kakashi his gift they both stared wide eyed and both of them grabbed Naruto into a big bear hug. Later they all stood outside and watched Naruto work with Hinata's blades. They saw they had a button on the grip so that they could be moved from a blade to a shield like gauntlet or they could connect to the full blade like shield. I call these Ryao's wings I designed them just for you and I put a piece of my altar in it so that you'll always have me with you and to let you know I'm alive, he said as he gave them back and told her how to activate the seal and she did so and sealed them away in her new jacket and the Kakashi and Naruto demonstrated how the seal and weapons worked. Later that night Hinata and Naruto were packing and Naruto had a bad feeling about this trip so he walked down to the weapons vault and sealed five Fuma shurikens and three demon wind shurikens into his glove. And he knew he would need some new techniques in his arsenal so he sent eight clones to the library to search for clan jutsu. About an hour later they retuned with a tone of scrolls of Uzumaki techniques but nothing on Namikaze techniques. They had even brought him a book on the Uzumaki taijutsu. He sealed all the scrolls into a storage scroll along with the forbidden scroll of sealing. After that Naruto and Hinata drifted into a peaceful sleep about 4.30 Kazuma woke Naruto up. Naruto nudged Hinata to wake up so they could get changed and get to the gates. When they arrived they saw not only Jiraiya but Kakashi waiting for them. Hey big bro are you coming too? No I'm just here to give you this. He said as he handed Naruto an old diary. It was your mother's every full moon she would go into a trance for three day and when she came out of it she write in this all day. I tried to read it once but didn't get anything she was talking about. He said as he disappeared in a poof of smoke. Naruto smiled as the trio left on the search for Tsunade. About a full day of traveling they stopped in a small town and rented a room for the night and Jiraiya left to search for information on Tsunade. About an hour later Hinata was snuggled up in Naruto's arms while Naruto had started to read the diary when there has a knock on the door. Naruto got up and walked to the door he felt two strong chakra signatures one he had never felt before but the second he hadn't felt since he was seven. Hinata whatever happens do not come out of this room. She nodded as he walked out of the room two men wearing black cloches with red clouds on them stood before him. One looked like a mutant fish and the other was none other than Itachi Uchiha. At this Naruto smirked, hello Itachi you look well other than your eye look like they're fading. Naruto Uzumaki you will come with us, Itachi stated with no emotion in his voice. So this is the boy who holds the nine-tailed fox doesn't look like much let me cut off one of his legs so he doesn't get away. The fish man said as started laughing, what's so funny brat? The fish man asked, Naruto, you think I have the fox that's a riot there is no such thing to prove it I'll summon him. He said as he ran through the seals and yelled, Kazuma, and in a poof of smoke Kazuma stood in front of the two men. He is right there is no nine-tailed fox I turned into a fox as I came into your world looking for a man named Mujo. He said as the two men were shocked at what they saw. Itachi I wanted to tell you you've been pardoned for your crime so you can come back to Konoha. Naruto stated when a voice was heard yelling at Itachi. He turned around to see Sasuke. Itachi today you die. He yelled charging at Itachi with a chidori in his hand. Before Sasuke could hit Itachi grabbed Sasuke's wrist breaking it by accident. So he flung Sasuke to the other end room and performed his sukiyomi on him as Sasuke's screams could be heard Itachi slowly walked to Naruto and said. We'll be in Konoha in one month we will see you then, he said as Itachi blew a hole in the wall and left. Not even a second later Jiraiya came in the room yelling, what the hell happened here and who the hell are you? He shouted pointing at Kazuma. This is Kazuma or you might know him as Kayubi, Naruto said shocking Jiraiya, and to answer your first question we just had a run in with a hero that saved both me and old man Hokage from certain death. He said as Guy came flying and giving a kick to Jiraiya the shortly after left with Sasuke asking Jiraiya to bring back Tsunade. After that transition they all sailed down and Naruto and Kazuma told their story which left Hinata and Jiraiya baffled when they finished. Well kids I guess I'll start your training tomorrow so get some sleep I'll be back in the morning and we'll leave for the next town.
Later that night Naruto couldn't sleep so he stayed up reading his mom's diary which was the weird part he knew what she was talking about. Kazuma this is your world but how? Well your dad's letter did say your eye could send you to another demotion so it's my world she talking about. But she has a lot of detailed drawings of something called car. Hey I just had a great idea if we can covert it one of my world's cars you could have a car here that runs on chakra. How are we going to that? I'm going send you a mental image of everything I need and you need to imagine it here and it'll tell you when I figure it out. It went on like that for about two hours when Kazuma finished he unsealed a few of his clan scrolls and the scroll of sealing and began to read and by morning he had learned three flame jutsu and two wind jutsu when Jiraiya told him to get ready to go. Along the way Jiraiya had shown Naruto and Hinata a jutsu called the Risangan. Unfortunately for Jiraiya Naruto had his Necrogan activated so he got the jutsu down on his first try. But Hinata got as far as the rubber ball stage when she ran into trouble. Naruto helped her as much as he could but she kept turning down his help. But he did manage to teach her two jutsu the blood clone and the shadow clone jutsu which in the end helped her out a lot. But his training was a lot more hectic than hers. He would make 10 shadow clone and made half of them perform kanai balancing and the other half read the book on his clan's taijutsu. After he would give his clones their jobs Naruto would make 15 blood clones he would have the first 5 practice his altar in both stages the next 5 he would have train with his necrogan and jutsus and the final 5 he drew gravity seals on each of their limbs and made each seal 100 pounds each. He did this every day for a week and every time he dispelled his clones the past outright there from chakra depletion and fatigue. Naruto and Kazuma had been out of touch for that week until he passed out he found himself in front of Kazuma. Dude it's about time you got here I finished our little project prototype follow me. Kazuma said as he walked out the door Naruto followed. When Naruto walked outside he saw a jeep like Kazuma used to drive in his world. Wow you made this, yup and it doesn't run on anything but chakra and the best part it doesn't take a lot to go a long way. He said showing him how to work it which wasn't hard you charge enough chakra into the steering wheel to start it putting enough chakra into the wheel to equal one shadow clone could get you 20 miles. Kazuma teaching Naruto to drive stopped at a cliff overlooking the ocean they watched the sun set. Naruto looked at Kazuma who looked deep in thought, Kazuma you okay man? Yes I was thinking about the Risangan it's made of pure chakra but what if you added you elemental chakra to it how strong would it be? I'll try it the second I wake up tomorrow. But first summon me first so I can start the schematics on this car I'll start right away. Okay but that will be sooner than you think, Naruto said as he began to vanish. He awoke in his tent with Hinata snuggled next to him. He quickly escaped her grasp and walked out into the cool morning air. He flashed through the summoning seals and summoned Kazuma. The second he did he pulled out a scroll and unsealed it to have a huge stack of graft paper and pens and pencils and a sharpener. This should hold you for a while, Naruto said walking off. Naruto had finished painting the second Hokage's seal on his right hand then placed his glove back on and formed a Risengan in his hand. Then came the hard part he began to load his wind and hellfire chakra into the Risengan and it started to elongate into a cylinder bullet shape and it held for a few seconds then it blew up in his face. Hey try doing that with your altar that power will break your arm, Kazuma yelled. Naruto was mad he knew he could do this but then a thought popped in his head it would only take less time if he used clones. He slit his wrist slightly to draw some blood and made 30 blood clones. He made 10 work with the gravity seals and his family's taijutsu and the rest were with him to work on the jutsu. All 20 clones plus Naruto activated their altar and necrogan and they began the process of maintaining it. The longest that it could be held was 2 minutes. The longer it was held the more violent it spun. About 3 hours later he was low on chakra so he let the clones dispel themselves and gained what little chakra they had left and walked over to Kazuma. Hey dude you got far and so did I in fact I'm done, he said proudly. Good you can hand over the section on molding and forging, said not even getting a bit of retaliation from Kazuma. Yeah well I'm bushed I'm going to go get some sleep talk to you later. Kazuma said in a big yawn and disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Naruto pulled one storage scroll and one message scroll and sealed the schematics and a large sum of money inside the scroll. Next he wrote a message to old man Higurashi. Dear Mr. Higurashi, Naruto again right now I'm away from Konoha and I'm sure you busy but I have a big project I'm working on the second I get back. 
But no it's not a weapon but will be just as great. I not only need you to make the molds but also forged each piece. In the storage scroll are the schematics and a down payment but please do this for me I'll repay you somehow. Sincerely Naruto. Then Naruto summoned a messenger toad using half his remaining chakra and sent it off to its destination. Just as Naruto finished that transition Jiraiya showed up yelling. I found her she is one mile from here so get ready we leave now. After a while running up a hill fenced in by stone they came to a stop when they saw a blonde haired lady wearing a green short sleeved jacket that said, Slug Queen, on the back and there was another young with short black hair lady wearing a black kimono holding a pig. But that's not what hooked Naruto he could feel Orochimaru's aka Mujo's energy in the air and his only thought was, he was here now where did he go? Looking all around himself with his necrogan but could not find him. Tsunade long time no see. Jiraiya to what do I owe this displeasure? I have some matters to discuss with you. Fine let's just get to a more tolerable setting, she said walking away. Ten minutes later in a bar on the other side of town sat Naruto. Hanada and Jiraiya across from Tsunade and her apprentice Shizune and her pig Tun Tun. After they had settled in Tsunade pulled out a deck of cards shuffled them and dealt them between herself and Jiraiya and they began a game of poker when Tsunade finally broke the awkward silence. So what is it you need from me Jiraiya I'm sure you didn't come to chat did you? She asked taking a large drink from a bottle of sake. I'm here because you have been elected as Hokage and I'm to bring you to bring you back. He said as Tsunade glared at him then snorted. No only a fool who wants to die an early death would ever want to be Hokage. She said with a sarcastic tone. But those words were the worst mistake she had ever made as those words cut deep and pissed him off. Hanada felt Naruto's killing intent grow and she tried to calm him down. Naruto I know you're mad but please calm down. She pleaded. I'm sorry angel but I've got to give her a piece of my mind. He said as he looked at Tsunade with his necrogan blazing. And you, how dare you insult my father and old man Sarutobi they were real heroes unlike you. A old hag hiding behind a genjutsu to mask your age if you ever insult them in front of me again I don't care if you are a woman I'll beat the hell out of you. He yelled as Tsunade stood up reaching his eye level and saying. Is that a challenge brat? Yes it is how about we take it outside? He yelled as she nodded and followed him out of the bar. They both took their chosen side of the street. Tsunade held up one finger saying. Hanada ran out of the bar and yelled. Naruto please be careful, I will angel, I only need this one finger to beat you, she said. Naruto muttered, whatever, and charged at her with his fist blazing with hell fire and trying out his family's taijutsu but failed as the third punch he threw was blocked by Tsunade. Then she flicked his forehead sending him to the other side of the street. Naruto was already tired from his training from earlier today so he had to finish this soon. Hey Brad why do you care so much about the title Hokage? Tsunade asked him. Because that is my dream I want to protect the village and my precious people. He said earning a shocked look from Tsunade. She dropped her head as memories of her dead brother and boyfriend haunted her thoughts. Naruto saw this and tried to take advantage of this taking the last of his chakra and formed his new unstable Rasengan and charged at the slug Sanin. Tsunade snapped out of her trance and saw the incoming attack taking the defensive slammed her finger into the ground which made a 8 foot long 1 foot deep crack in the street making Naruto fall face first. His jutsu hit the ground making a red hot 5 foot deep crater. Tsunade turned to Jiraiya and said, Jiraiya what do you think you're doing teaching the boy a powerful technique that he will never be able to learn? Jiraiya was about to speak when Naruto spoke up. He didn't teach me this I took the Rasengan and added my elemental affinities to it I call it the Rasan Hell Bullet. It's not done but I'll finish it in three days you'll see. He said standing up gripping his right arm with little drops of blood coming off his fingers. But Tsunade did not see the blood. You seem pretty confident about this well I'll make you a bet if you can finish that jutsu in one week I'll come back to Konoha with you hell I'll even throw this necklace that belonged to my grandfather the first Hokage and but if you lose you have to hand over to me. She said waiting for his reply but only got a nod. After that Naruto and Hinata made their way to a hotel down the block for the night. As they left Shizun took her leave leaving Jiraiya and Tsunade at the bar. They went back inside and ordered another round of sake and talked about what they had done up till now. Then Tsunade asked an unusual question. 
So what made you take the container of Kayubi and Ahayuga as your apprentices? Jiraiya looked over at her and said, Naruto is a container yes but believe me when I say this there is no such being as Kayubi plus he is the son of Minato and Kashina. As for Hinata she is Naruto's girlfriend he asked me take her on too the girl has been through a lot she has almost died twice and she was disowned if not for Naruto she might have killed herself. Jiraiya said shocking Tsunade to the core. Wow Jiraiya you sure know how to choose your students. Yes I do but there is a bigger matter we have to deal with what did Orochimaru want from you. Tsunade looked at him with a look that said, oh crap. We just talked nothing more nothing less so it does not concern you, she stated dropping the subject. The next morning Naruto woke up and changed washed up and had a little to ate something then as he opened the door to leave and there stood Shizun. Um hello again I need to tell you something, she said. What is it? He asked, I know you made that bet with Lady Tsunade but you cannot accept that necklace it may be valuable but everyone else who has ever worn it has died it serves as a reminder to her past, she said getting a look from Naruto that told her he understood. Listen I'm not interested in the necklace all I care about is proving her wrong and getting her to Konoha, Naruto said walking away to go train with a new determination. Naruto found a deserted clearing and made 50 blood clones and 10 shadow clones which took away half of his chakra. He ordered the shadow clones to read in his clan's techniques and in the forbidden scroll of sealing. But he ordered 10 blood clones to increase the weight on the gravity seals to 200 pounds and for them to practice his clan's taijutsu. He made 5 blood clones to train with the necrogan and jutsu and another 5 train with his altar. He had the last 30 clones to work with him activating his altar started working the resin hell bullet. While Naruto was off training Hinata went off to find Tsunade who was just 3 rooms away. She knocked on her door and sure enough Tsunade came to the door. Well if it isn't Hinata what can I do for you my dear? Tsunade asked sweetly. Well I wa, was wo, wondering if yo, you could tea, teach me a few medical tech, techniques? She asked shyly. Tsunade smiled at this. Jiraiya wasn't lying when he told me you had a confidence problem but yeah I can I first need to know what your elemental affinities, do you know what they are? Hinata nodded. Wind and water. Tsunade's smile grew even wider not only was she a Hayuga with an interest in medical arts she had an affinity that only made the techniques stronger which was water. Great come on and I'll start your training right now. With that Hanada became Tsunade's temporary apprentice. Back with Naruto he trained his ass into the ground working on his new jutsu till he had barely had enough chakra to keep him awake. He would pitch his tent and sleep then start the with the same routine the next day. He did this for 5 days gaining a little progress with the Risan Hell Bullet every day. Hell his clones came up with 3 new hand sealless techniques that channeled through his sword. He learned 1 clan art jutsu and 1 jutsu from the forbidden scroll. A. N. Ok you're only going to see one of his new jutsu and one of his clan jutsu in this chapter. But on the 5th day he overdid it and passed out from a major chakra drain. Luckily for Naruto Shizun had been spying on him. She scooped him up and took him back to the hotel where Tsunade did a check up on him. So how is he Lady Tsunade? She asked, he has both severe chakra and fire burns plus he has exhausted all his chakra the earliest he'll wake up is 3 days from now looks like you lost kid. Tsunade said walking away. Lady Tsunade I know what tomorrow is and I can't let you go through with it, Shizun said trying to stop Tsunade. Shizun you have no idea what I plan on doing so shut up. Tsunade said before knocking the poor girl out. Walking to the bar Jiraiya she took a sobering pill which cuts the effect of alcohol in half so she would be able to be in peak performance in a few hours. She and Jiraiya drank the night away until she slipped a drug into his sake knocking him out. From there she made her way to where she was to meet Orochimaru. Three hours later Naruto awoke from his sleep to see Shizun's unconscious form on the floor. He wasted no time waking her up. Shizun looked up at Naruto then went wide eye and grabbed Naruto's jacket frantically asking. What day is it? What time is it? It's Monday morning why? Tsunade is going to meet Orochimaru to make a deal with him, Shizun said getting Naruto's attention. Naruto made a shadow clone and ordered it to stay with Shizun as Naruto ran to the window. Where are you going? She asked. To pay that bastard Orochimaru a visit. Naruto said taking off activating his Necrogan's Byakugan feature looking for Tsunade. He found her within seconds and what he saw shocked him was she was fighting. 
but who she was fighting was the man who helped him through the second exam in the Chunin exam Kabuto. See this made Naruto run faster. Just a few seconds away Naruto stared flashing through ten hand signs leaping in the air to see Kabuto running at a blood-covered Tsunade ready for a killing blow. As Naruto finished his hand signs engulfing his right arm in black flame yelling. Uzumaki art. Hell dragon jutsu. As a dragon made of black flame shot at Kabuto. Kabuto barely dogged and jumped back to Orochimaru's side. Well Orochimaru it's good to see you in bad health or should I say Mujo? Naruto said drawing his sword with one swing it both separated and created a hug black flame whirlwind taking the separated blade sucking it in the vortex as Naruto yelled. Uzumaki art. Necro maelstrom. Kabuto saw the attack coming and bit his thumb and slammed his palm to the ground summoning a huge wall with a face on it. Naruto's attack slammed into the wall making a huge dent in it before it disappeared out of existence. Orochimaru aka Mujo smile grew making him say. So you know who I am it doesn't matter you'll have to do better than that to beat me or my associate here. Oh I'll do better than that, Naruto said opening his mind link with Kazuma. Hey Kazuma do you want in on this fight? Hell yeah I do. Well Mujo an old friend of yours would like to play, Naruto said summoning Kazuma shocking Orochimaru. Just as he did this Hinata Shizune and Jiraiya arrived to the scene. But Tsunade was sure Naruto would be killed so she yelled to him. Naruto get away they're too strong for you they'll kill you, she yelled. Hinata also wanted to say something but she he had to do this. Shut up you old grandma this is something I've got to do besides what's scarier blood or dying without accomplishing anything, Naruto said with venom in his voice. Naruto you take the guy on the left I'll take Mujo for now, Kazuma said. Naruto sheathed his sword and raised his right arm while Kazuma did the same. Naruto then shouted his new favorite phrase. Darkness falls be reborn. Both Kazuma's and his arms split into three different sections and forced back together by rings. Which as Naruto had told Jiraiya and Hinata K. Flashback two weeks ago, Naruto was training his Necrogan and Kazuma was trying desperately to activate his altar but couldn't. Well kid looks like I really don't have an altar anymore so I we might as well work on yours, Kazuma said receiving a nod from the blonde. Naruto took his stance and with a yell of, darkness falls be reborn, his altar formed, but that when the strangest thing happened Kazuma's altar began to form also. A, N. Okay if you don't know what Kazuma's or Naruto's altar looks like look it up because it's a pain in the ass to explain and Naruto's altar is in chapter 1, this shocked them both. How did you just activate your altar Kazuma? I think you have to have your altar activated for me to use mine which is cool because we can now have an altar spar. Kazuma said as he and Naruto had the biggest powerhouse spar in Naruto's life, with Kazuma winning. End flashback. Naruto and Kazuma dashed at Kabuto and Orochimaru with Jiraiya in serious fatigue followed Kazuma. Naruto started with his, blackout first bullet, on Kabuto which hit him dead on. But Kabuto just got back up as if nothing happened. That was a strong attack but you'll have to do better to beat me, Kabuto said as he charged at Naruto flashing through a set of hand signs yelling, Chakra Scalpel. Naruto wanting to save his last two bullets switched to his special taijutsu. His hand covered in black flame with his necrogan flaring. After a series of punches from Naruto Kabuto found an opening and used his chakra charged fists and hit Naruto's left arm making it temporarily useless. The pain was so bad to Naruto he cried out. Kazuma and Jiraiya were in a real jam. Somehow Orochimaru or Mujo as Kazuma kept calling him had somehow summoned his ultimate summon Manda who was not happy. Kazuma was down to his last bullet and Jiraiya couldn't use a lot of his chakra yet. Mujo looked over at Kabuto and Naruto who had just used his final bullet and missed. Kabuto had hit Naruto's leg with his chakra scalpel. Which made Mujo smile even bigger. Kabuto forget the boy and finish Tsunade and take the girl she may be useful to me, Mujo ordered. Kabuto hit Naruto's chest with his chakra scalpel and said, now you will slowly die as your heart collapse in on itself. He said as he then slapped him out of the way and dashed at Tsunade. Hanada unsealed her Ryao's wings and dashed in front of Tsunade trying to protect her. Kabuto stopped and grabbed Hanada's neck and held her in the air whispering in her ear. I'll enjoy watching Lord Orochimaru experiment on you. The he tossed her aside ad lunged at Tsunade with a kanai. But it didn't hit her it hit something black. 
The black thing turned out to be Naruto enveloped in black energy. You made two mistakes just now bastard. You hurt my girlfriend and attacked one of my friends, Naruto yelled in a demonic voice as his altar change. Once again it his arm disappeared and reformed. Had its mechanical yet demonic look to it and a mechanical like dragon wing formed on his back, he pulled back his arm and thrusted it into Kabuto's stomach yelling. Shadow shock bullet burst. Sending Kabuto flying. Naruto felt his heart slowly stopping but he couldn't stop yet. He looked over at Kazuma's and Jiraiya's fight. Jiraiya was on the ground and Kazuma had just been Chu out of existence. A. N. Remember he's a summon he can't die yet plus he is a part of Naruto. Naruto saw how powerful Mujo was without his arms and thought he had one shot. His unfinished Rissangan, taking the last of his chakra he formed his Rissan Hell Bullet in his altered hand. But this time it was 100% stable. Taking flight rushing at Manda and Orochimaru with his arm extended his arm ripping through the bottom of Manda's mouth and hitting Mujo yelling. Rissan Hell Bullet, the force of it not only hurt Mujo but sending him flying back at least 70 yards. Unfortunately for Naruto he didn't kill him, with the help of Kabuto he escaped. Naruto wanted to chase the but just at that moment his heart start stopped and he fell to the ground. Tsunade and Hinata ran to Naruto's side. Tsunade looked for his pulse but found none. She ripped open his shirt and using her chakra tried to start his heart again. But after the sixth try she was in tears along with Hinata. But Hinata was hysterically crying saying. Naruto don't die on me you promised to marry me so you can't die, she cried as two glowing tears fell from her eyes into Naruto's mouth. Just as the tears hit Naruto's heart began to beat and he opened his eye and said. I am going to marry you and grandma that necklace is mine now, Naruto said passing out. Tsunade took off her necklace around Naruto's neck smiling along with Hinata thanking Kami that he was alive. The next day Naruto was back in complete health as they all sat in Tsunade's room because she wanted to tell them something. Okay listen up since Naruto won the bet I'm going to come back with you to be Hokage and as such Jiraiya you'll have to give me a full report and date when you leave and return to the village. Tsunade stated earning a groan from the Sanin, and I wanted to say something about you Hinata. You have a gift that hasn't surfaced in your clan for a hundred years they're called the tears of rebirth which as I was told could heal any wound or disease that it comes in contact with so that is why I'm taking you under my wing for both protection from your clan for they will want to make you into a baby factory. And the second is you'll be my apprentice because you have shown the most raw talent I've seen in years. With this Hinata was both shocked and overjoyed and she hugged Tsunade tightly telling her thank you over and over again. Naruto was really happy for her but he remembered his mission that Sarutobi gave him. Unsealing the documents from his glove he handed it to Tsunade. Since you're going to be Hokage you'll need this it's a pardon that was given to me in old man Serutobi's will for Itachi Uchiha he'll be coming back to the village in three weeks with his friend the jolly blue giant which if I'm right he'll want to join the village and this must not be discussed with anybody because it's an double S ranked secret mission given to me. A few hours later the group began making their three day trip back to Konoha. When they had returned Naruto and Hinata went straight home in which they both got bone crushing hugs from Enko and Kakashi. But as he realized that they truly cared for him he found they should know about Kazuma. Hey sis, bro I have something you should know about, Naruto said gaining their attention. What is it Naruto? They both asked in unison. Naruto went through his summoning seals and summoned Kazuma scaring Kakashi and Enko both. This is Kazuma or you might know him as Kayubi but he is not but it's not my place to tell you his story so Kazuma if you could. Yes, my name is Kazuma and yes I was the nine-tailed fox due to an accident coming into your world but I did not attack your village but one man who took everything from me his name is Mujo or you might know him as Orochimaru he killed my wife Konami and took my friend Ryuho away and I believe he is dead but I followed him here my body had changed and was tired but before I fell asleep a man who was in severe pain with white eyes found me. Being the kind person I am used a little of my altar to help him and his eyes became red then I passed out. When I woke up I felt Mujo's energy and I followed it to this village where you thought I was attacking and attacked me so I defended myself then before I knew it I was sealed inside Naruto's body and the rest is history. Both Anko and Kakashi both were sad yet felt a new hate for Orochimaru they both accepted Kazuma now that the truth was out, but after that Naruto said he had to run a few errands. 
he first stopped at the bank and withdrew an honest sum from his account and he and Kazuma ran to Higarashi's shop to pick up his order. As they walked in they saw old man Higarashi had just finished selling a razor maelstrom to an anbu. Naruto long time no see? Hey Mr. Higarashi, is my order done? Yes it is I worked all week to finish it and please call me Seji as we are friends, he said with a smile. So how much do I owe you? Not a dime your weapons have been selling like hotcakes especially the claw shot. Plus here is your cut of the profits. Seji said handing him a check for a large sum of money. Then he took Naruto and Kazuma to the back where the room was filled with the pieces to the chakra car. Wow you got every piece right impressive, Kazuma said surprised. Yes well a lot of these pieces I've never seen before just what are you making Naruto? Just a little project and believe me it will be great but I'm not franchising it for it will be an original and for me to use only but I do have two new designs for you I made two days ago. Naruto said remembering the event. Flashback. Naruto was having a bad night for he could not sleep he had too many things on his mind. But just as extreme boredom had set in he had two ideas. The first one was if a jutsu like the wind blade could extend why couldn't a blade be made out of pure chakra? And two a sword got in the way a lot in the ninja world and delayed vital movements that could allow you to stay alive in battle so why not there be a sword with a retractable blade for easy carrying? He pulled out some graph paper and activated his necrogan helping him design the first one he intended to be a jutsu but failed. So he thought of a conduit to make the blade form. Which was a anbu grade katana handle with chakra manipulation seals plus his seal on it so you could add your element to the blade. The second was just as it described a broadsword that could retract it and was spring loaded to extend the blade when needed plus his seal on the handle of the blade. End flashback. Naruto handed him the schematics with pleasure to Seji before saying. My rule apply for these also but I do want the first versions that are made. Naruto said receiving a nod fro Seji. Then Naruto and Kazuma took all the pieces that were made and sealed them in three storage scrolls and left. As they were walking home Naruto asked Kazuma, How long do you think it will take you to make the car Kazuma? About three days if you give me fifteen shadow clones to help me, he stated as an anbu appeared in front of them. Lord Namikaze Lady Tsunade wishes to speak to you. Okay. But Kazuma here is some money and the shadow clones will follow you home I'll be back as soon as I can. Naruto said handing Kazuma some money and making the shadow clones before following the Anbu to Tsunade's office. He entered and stood there in respect as any ninja would have to do in case the got a mission. So Naruto you're quite the popular fellow in the ninja population right now but I have called you here is because tomorrow after my inauguration I'm promoting you to Jonin and Hinata and Kazuma to Chunin. She stated receiving a gasp and a smile from the blonde. That is great but Kazuma isn't a ninja so how is he going to be promoted? Simple I am granting him an honorary ninja license so he will be an official ninja of Konoha and you will also receive your pay for completing that mission from Sarutobi tomorrow other than what I just told you you're dismissed, she stated receiving a thank you from Naruto before he left. The first thing he did was run home and told Anko Kakashi Hinata and Kazuma who was working hard with the clones on the car. That's great Naruto congratulations and you too Hinata, Kakashi said. Yeah my little bro and soon to be sister in law will be among the elite ninjas in Konoha hell even the ex furball is going to be a ninja. Anko said earning both a chuckle and a glare from Kazuma who was working on the motor of the car. Yes that is great new Naru I'm finally Chunin which means I've beat both my sister and Neji for once, Hinata said happily. Yeah I've wanted to be a ninja a few years now but I don't have any chakra so I didn't think I could even if I wanted to and I was out of the seal, Kazuma said happily. The next day all of Konoha ninja included were in front of the Hokage tower as they were introduced to their new Hokage. After about an hour it was Tsunade's turn for her speech. Thank you for this honored position as Hokage and I promise that I'll protect the village with everything I have. But as my first act as Hokage I would like to reward three individuals for both retrieving and protecting me from Orochimaru's clutches. She said as Naruto Hinata and Kazuma walked into the view of the people. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze you are here promoted to Jonin for outstanding courage mastery and creation of advanced jutsu and finally risking your life for your fellows in arms. Most of the civilian population were not pleased with this but the ninja population was in an uproar of joy at his promotion. Next is Hinata Hayuga you are here by promoted to Chunin for exceptional skill in the field of medicine risking your life for a comrade in arms and finally you shall be my apprentice from now on. 
Tsunade stated as the crow all but the Hyugas were applauding her. Next is a man who isn't a ninja but has show that even if he doesn't have chakra you can still be powerful Kazuma you are appointed a ninja license and the rank of Chunin for extreme knowledge of taijutsu risking your life for a comrade and finally protecting the name of Konoha's honor, she stated as the crowd cheered for him making him happy. As the ceremony ended teams 810 and team guy offered to take the trio out to celebrate. Naruto and Hinata said yes but Kazuma declined for he wasn't able to ingest food or drink so Naruto sent him home with 20 shadow clones. The next day Naruto and Hinata woke up with a headache from all the sugar and music from last night. Walking outside Naruto saw something he didn't expect to see. The car was finished and was bigger than the one in his mind that Kazuma built instead of a two-seater it was a four. Well Naruto what do you think I worked all night with your clones and finished it early? Kazuma said wiping some grease off his hands. It's amazing but it's bigger than the other one why? I added a few extras to it like extra seats and some you'll see later. Kazuma said sitting in the passenger side, so now that it's done let take it for a test drive. Naruto nodded getting in and loading chakra into the searing wheel staring it and they were off to downtown. As they drove Naruto noticed he couldn't hear it move until he noticed a sound barrier seal engraved on the hood of the car. As they got further in town Naruto noticed Lee on a bridge sulking. He stopped the car next to Lee and asked. Lee you surgery is tomorrow isn't it? Yes but Lady Tsunade said there is a chance I won't make it. Well the damage to you arm and leg can't be that bad. Naruto said activating his necrogan but before he could look at Lee's arm and leg he saw a suppression seal radiating on Lee's chest. A. N. No gay jokes people it. Lee get in the car we have to take you to Tsunade you have some kind of seal on your body. He said as Lee did what he was told. They drove to the medical corps where Tsunade now supervised personally to find her already in an empty room. What can I do for you boys? Tsunade asked. I found a suppression seal on Lee's chest and it seems to be blocking why he isn't able to use chakra. Tsunade was shocked as she did a diagnostic on Lee to find the same thing. Lee if this works you might be able to use chakra and you might have a better chance at surviving your surgery do you wish me to break it? Lee nodded. She forced her chakra into the seal and it broke but something else happened Lee's body was engulfed in light as it began to change. Lee was no longer there but a boy that looked 16 with green hair took his place. Both Naruto and Kazuma recognized the person and one name escaped their lips. Ryuho? Lee was now gone and a man with green hair and cold blue eyes took his place. Not only that Naruto saw that both his arm and leg was healed. He slowly rose from the table looking over to Kazuma then began gripping his head in pain. Ryuho it is you what the hell happened to you? Kazuma asked in worry tone grabbing Lee's shoulders. Ryuho that sounds familiar, he said gripping his head. But one name keeps running through my head, Zetsue. He said as half the room dispersed in a rainbow mist forming a shape of a man. Said man was completely wit with purple patches on its body. His arms were bonded together. Two ribbon-like tentacles came from its back. And finally half of the being's face was covered by a mask-like armor. It walked up to Lee and placed one of its blade-like ribbons on his shoulder. Then just as soon as it did that id stated to disappear in the same rainbow mist in which it was created. Can someone please explain what just happened? Tsunade asked in an almost yelling tone. No clue but I guessing that when Mujo kidnapped Ryuho he placed the seal on him and dumped him. Naruto said with a joyful yet sad tone for Kazuma had his old friend yet he remembered nothing. So Lee never existed at all it was Ryuho which explains why he couldn't use chakra because I cannot either. Kazuma stated as when he finished the old rock Lee side of Ryuho came back and a dead to the world look came to his eyes as he assumed the fetal position. My whole life is a lie living as someone else as I had no memory of who I was what's the point of living, Ryuho said tearing up. Listen you may not know who you are anymore but you have friends who will care for you whoever you are or think you are like Naruto and me. Kazuma stated earning a smile from Ryuho. Just then Tsunade walked into the room with a file. This was your file la, uh, Ryuho it says you were found outside the village when you were a baby then you were adopted until you were seven the your parents died while on a mission leaving you their house and being on your own again is that right? Tsunade asked. Yes but I had to sell the house three years back to get into the academy. Now I live in an apartment a block away from the academy. Ryuho stated as he then got a, no you're not, from Naruto. 
Ryuhuu I extend an invitation to you to live with me and my family at the Uzumaki, Namikaze estate as of today do you accept? I would like to but I don't have much money and, he was cut off as Naruto said. Money is not an issue I have so much of it from my weapon designs and my family inheritance so it's covered you don't have to pay me just live with us so you have it easier. Then I accept buddy, Ryuhou said smiling. Ryuhou now that your true identity has been revealed I'm having you keep the name Rock Lee as an alias for mission purposes. Tsunade stated. Other than that in a room that needs repaired you are in good health you may go, she said pushing the trio out the door. Ryuho that leotard looks a little too small for you so why don't you and Kazuma go get you some new clothes my treat and Kazuma will help you get packed until I get to you guys later. Naruto said handing Kazuma some money then started down the hallway. Naruto where are you going? Kazuma asked. To visit Sasuke he got beat pretty bad so I'm checking on him. He said leaving Ryuho and Kazuma heading to the receptionist desk. May I help you? A woman said. Yes I'm looking for Sasuke Uchiha's room. Oh it's room 201 down the hall there, she said pointing to the room. Naruto walked in to see Sakura trying to feed Sasuke an apple while he ignored her. Hey guys how has it been while I was gone? Naruto asked as both Sakura and Sasuke looked at him. Naruto you're a John and talk some sense into Sasuke he's been asleep for a week and a half and refuses to eat. Sakura said as Sasuke slapped a laid off his lap making a break on impacted upon the floor. He jumped off the bed and walked over to Naruto, loser fight me? Why do we have to fight I'll get in trouble if I engage a Konoha Genin in an unauthorized match on top of that you are not on my squad so the answer is no, Naruto said walking for the door. As he tried to leave but Sasuke threw a sucker punch at Naruto. It failed as Naruto caught it. Sasuke stop this I cannot fight you because of regulations otherwise I'd throw down with you in a heartbeat but I can't so I'll be on my way. Naruto left the hospital and drove Ryao's house to help him pack. As he got there he found that he had dropped the leotard and was now sporting a black skin tight sleeveless shirt and a pair of anbu grade pants. And they were surrounded boxes. Ryuho liked the new look but is this everything? No Kazuma is pushing my furniture to the living room. Leave the furniture you don't want as every room in my estate is fully furnished, Naruto said pulling out three storage scrolls. Sealing everything away and led them out the door. So Kazuma you live with Naruto also? Ryuho asked not knowing their condition. Technically yes but me and Naruto have a condition that we cannot explain out in the open. Kazuma said giving a nod before letting the subject for now. After they arrived they were greeted by Anko. Hey bro who's your friend? Believe it or not this is Lee or was Lee? Naruto said shocking Anko. Yes his real name is Ryuho but was changed to Rock Lee after we believe Orochimaru aka Mujo dumped him after he conducted experience on him after he kidnapped him from my world plus he has no memory of his old life. Kazuma said receiving a gasp from Ryuho. Well that's a hard story to swallow little bro and by the looks of it you have not told Ryuho there the whole story. Naruto mentally slapped himself for the slip up but at least they were in a safe location to reveal his and Kazuma's secret in which he and Kazuma did. The rest of that day was spent teaching Ryuho how to use his altar. He made great progress plus in a spar Ryuho and his altar Zetsue made one hell of a team. Plus both him and his altar were speed demon to boot. But just as the day got better a disturbance wrecked their day. Naruto and Hinata were having a romantic dinner picnic in the garden when Hiyashi Hayuga followed by five branch members approached Naruto and Hinata. Uzumaki step away from my property as I am taking her back, Hiyashi said in please let me kill you tone. Hinata is not your property for one and you are not in the position to be making demands you bastard. Listen you Brad she has a gift that has long been thought to have disappeared from our clan now I'm going to give it back to our clan this way we'll be the most honored clan in the village. Just as he said this Neji appeared in front of Hiyashi in his gentle fist stance ready to fight. Lord Hiyashi you must stop this you might be arrested for treason she protected by three laws now? Neji said trying to save Hinata. But Hiyashi made the sign of the tiger activating the seal on Neji's forehead immobilizing him and continued his march at Hinata. Naruto jumped in front of Neji with his razor maelstrom drawn ready for a scrap. Hinata ran to Neji to help him. I'm sorry Hinata I tried to stop him, he said weakly. No don't be sorry I am grateful you defended me, 
He is right one Hanada is my fiancé which falls under the clan resurrection act 2 you disowned her which means you can't touch her or say she is your daughter and finally she is the apprentice of lady Hokage so you will be charged with treason if you touch her so I'll give you till 3 to get off my property. Naruto said starting the count as they kept moving forward. 2. They kept coming so Naruto stretched his sword arm high above his head. Finally. 3. Naruto slashed high sword down with a yell of. Uzumaki art. Hellfire River. Just that a river of black flame came flying at Hiyashi and his men. Unfortunately for Naruto Hiyashi used his rotation blocking the whole attack. He ran at Naruto ready for a killing blow when three Anbu black op guards stopped Hiyashi with their swords to his throat. Lord Hyuga you have just violated four laws you are hereby under arrest. The bird masked Anbu said as the cat and wolf masked Anbu tied his arms to his back. As they did to his guards also then they took them off to jail. The rest of the night went on without a hitch until exactly at 2 a.m. Naruto was awoken by an Anbu with a summon form from Tsunade. He arrived by car not even 10 minutes later to see Tsunade was extremely pissed. Naruto I have summoned you because as of a half hour ago Sasuke defected to go to Orochimaru so you have 5 minutes to assemble a team and retrieve Sasuke Uchiha, she said shocking Naruto. All right I want Choji Akamichi, Shikamaru Nara, Neji Hayuga, Kiba Inazuka, Rock Lee and Kazuma. Very well this is an S rank mission so try not to fail and get to the north gates you leave in 5 minutes, she said dismissing as he ran to his car summoning Kazuma. You know the mission? He asked getting a nod from Kazuma. They arrived at the gate to be the first ones there. Less than two minutes everybody arrived at the gate. Listen up as of surveillance scout Sasuke Uchiha has abandoned Konoha escorted by four of Orochimaru's ninjas so here is the plan squad one will be me Lee and Kazuma. Team two will be led by Shikamaru and will lead the chase as we circle around in this motor vehicle for an ambush everyone is to keep in contact by radio get ready we leave in one minute. Naruto said as they all nodded. But Neji saw Lee and was baffled. Lee is that you? He asked, yes Neji but you may only call me Lee on missions for my real name is Ryuho but I'll see you on the battlefield. Ryuho said getting in the car. Naruto. Naruto heard and turned to see Sakura's face who was crying hysterically. Naruto your Sasuke's best friend please just bring him back to me. Don't worry I will if I fail this time I'll try again till he's back here to you and that's a promos of a lifetime. He said flashing his famous smile at her. So how am I supposed to approach this Naruto? Shikamaru asked. Go any way you see fit if you can divide their forces we will try to get Sasuke to come back. Naruto said while motioning team 2 to move out as Naruto Kazuma and Ryuho in the car took a parallel path in silence. Naruto looked with his necrogan and saw Orochimaru's ninjas had a good head start but they were now carrying a coffin with Sasuke nowhere in sight. He then looked inside the coffin and sure enough Sasuke was in it. But the bizarre was he was going into some kind of transformation. Darkness falls to lazy genius? Lazy genius here copy? The enemy has Sasuke in a coffin retrieve it at all costs. Copy that. Shikamaru said cutting the transmit ion. Naruto Ryuho and Kazuma then began their high speed drive in order to pass the enemy in order to ambush them if need be. About a half hour later they had caught up but not wanting to be noticed Naruto hid his chakra like Jiraiya had taught him. The sound ninjas had stopped to rest Naruto Kazuma and Ryuho then began to formulate a plan of action. But they all agreed on letting team 2 to start the first assault then the assault then they would make their move when they were weakened. After a little while Naruto started eavesdropping learning that they had already been in a fight with another group of Konoha Nin and were tired after he heard about their strange power. Not even 10 minutes later team 2 had put the sound nins in a frenzy with one of Shikamaru's well thought out plans. Then they separated the so called sound 4 from each other with each one fighting a member of team 2. But just before Naruto Kazuma and Ryuho could do their snatch and grab a white haired man had snatched the coffin and started to run off. Naruto Ryuho and Kazuma pursued the man into a large clearing. The man just stopped in his tracks setting the coffin down turning his gaze to the trio. If you fools do not wish to die leave now, he said in an almost emotionless tone. Hand over Sasuke and we will, Naruto stated making the man chuckle. And why would I give my master's next vassal to pathetic weaklings like you three, the man said almost laughing. 
This is why. The trio yelled in unison as they attacked the man. But just as they did what looked like bones stretched out of his body blocking their attacks. They got ready for round two when the coffin suddenly exploded revealing Sasuke's slowly transforming body returning to normal. Sasuke end this foolishness and come back with us. Naruto called out to Sasuke. But Sasuke just started laughing like a madman before taking off. Sasuke. Naruto yelled trying to chase him but the man who they were fighting ran at him with a bone sword in hand ready for a killing blow. But was cut off by Ryuho who cut the man off with a kick to the face. Naruto go we'll handle things here, Ryuho said motioning him to leave. Yeah but activate your altar so I can use mine, Kazuma said while Naruto did just that as he ran after Sasuke. That was a strong kick but before we get serious may I ask for your names, the man asked. Kazuma the cell bullet. Kazuma stated proudly. Ryuho and what is yours? Ryuho asked. Kimaro Kagaya now prepare yourselves I hate to kill an opponent that is not prepared, he said charging forward. Well Ryuho let's show him what we alter users got. Kazuma said as his arm spit apart that was forced back together by gold rings. Then a gold orange and red armor covered his arm and three blade like fins appeared on his back. I agree with you my friend let's show him we're not pushovers, Zetsui, Ryuho said as Zetsue appeared in front of Ryuho stretching its ribbons stopping Kimaro's bone sword from hitting Ryuho. What is our strange looking thing that have appeared for you? Kimaro asked jumping back avoiding a punch from Kazuma and a ribbon slash from Zetsue. These are our altar a power he have from our wood and you should give up you can't win, Kazuma said both answering his question and warning him he was now in over his head. Never Lord Orochimaru must receive his new body even if it costs me my life, he said as bones began to spring out of his back and left arm. The one that came from his back turned into a whip and the bones on his arm made a drill like weapon. I live to serve Lord Orochimaru and I will kill you in his name, he shouted charging lashing the whip at Ryuho and focusing the drill at Kazuma. If that's the way you want it fine here goes nothing, shocking first bullet, Kazuma yelled as the first fin on his back broke apart creating an energy gale propelling himself forward fist out in front of him breaking the bone drill to pieces. While Zetsue using his ribbons cut the whip to shreds. I won't let you beat me like this. Kimaro yelled as the mark on his chest started glowing and stretched out all over his entire body changing him into a beast. His skin was now purple and large bone spikes came out of his back. Then a tail sprouted from his. Not going there and he once again formed the drill and whip. And he charged at them again. Kazuma punched the ground sending himself into the air before he started falling yelling. Annihilating second bullet. As the second fin broke up propelling him down making contacted with the drill but this time his altar started to crack. Seeing an opening Kimaro found an opening punching Kazuma sending him flying back. Ryuho saw Kazuma get hit took off his leg weights and charged at Kimaro right beside Zetsue using their insane speed to attack. The Ryuho had Zetsue wrap up Kimaro with his ribbons while he did a high speed leaf hurricane landing the kick to at Kimaro's face. But it had no effect. Kimaro was smiling like a madman as his drill started spinning cutting Zetsue's steel like ribbons like they were nothing. Then with a swing of his arm he sent the whip which wrapped up Ryuho and lunged his drill through Zetsue destroying him. Then he sent Ryuho flying into a tree. Kimaro started to laugh. Where all that power you had before go it's like you're nothing but weaklings now, he said gaining a rage filled roar from Kazuma. Kazuma was a very passive man but you never call him weak. But that's when the battle turned. Kazuma's arm dissolved and reformed but this time it was bigger in with and in the middle of the fist was like a small black hole that consumed energy. And on his back a blade like propeller appeared. Which started spinning lifting him off the ground. A, N. Ok as long as Naruto has his altar active Kazuma can use the first two stages of his altar Naruto has to be in stage 3 for Kazuma to use his. It's not over yet. Kazuma yelled flying at Kimaro who extended his drill hoping to block the attack but on impacted Kazuma's fist released a powerful blast of energy as he yelled. Shell bullet. Which busted through Kimaro's bone drill like it was nothing then the rest of the blast hit Kimaro head on sending him flying back making a crater when he hit the ground. With that Kazuma collapsed. Ryuho ran to Kazuma's side but not a second later large tree like bones began to erupted from the earth almost killing them both if not for a bed of sand both levitating them and protecting them. 
Just as Ryuhou side Kimaro appeared from out of a bone tree with a bone sword trying to stab both Kazuma and Ryuhou yelling. I will make you paw, he couldn't finish as he was dead from his disease finally taking its toll on him. Now with Naruto, he had followed Sasuke to the Valley of End where Sasuke was standing on the statue of Madara's head with Naruto on the first Hokage's head. Sasuke come on you need to come back you have no clue what Orochimaru has planned to do to you. Of course I do you pathetic loser he will give me power so that I may kill my brother and have my revenge. Sasuke said as he started laughing again. Naruto jumped over and tackled Sasuke down then punched him with his left fist. Sasuke took hold of Naruto's shirt and began lifting him in the air. Such power I want more but I might lose my mind if I use it too long, he thought to himself. I'll bring you back Sasuke you're not yourself let your friends help you, Naruto said before getting a rib breaking punch to his gut. No you won't I have severed those ties and it will stay that way till Itachi is dead. Listen old man Hokage left me a secret when he died saying Itachi didn't kill anyone it was Madara who did it you own father was planning a coup so that he could turn me into a weapon. Naruto said before being thrown at the first Hokage's statue making a crater in it. I will not listen to your lies you have never had a family so you don't know what it's like to have that kind of bond and have them taken away from you. You're wrong Sasuke I do know what it's like to both have a family and to lose family. Naruto said getting out of the crater, when I found out my mother died giving birth to me that hurt more than you know. I took her life and on top of that my father died sealing Kazuma inside of me leaving me and my adopted older brother and sister orphans. But the bond between you and me before I found out I still had family I thought of you as my brother and you're trying to destroy that for revenge. Naruto said with tears in his eyes. I'll bring you back even if I have to break every bone in your body. He hell using his blackout first bullet on Sasuke. But he missed for Sasuke jumped back flashing through his fireball jutsu sending a large fireball at Naruto. But Naruto unsheathed his razor maelstrom swinging it yelling. Namikaze art. Hurricane Gale Dragon. A large dragon made of wind flew through the fireball as if it wasn't there and slammed into Sasuke sending him into the water below. Naruto descended to the water using his chakra to stick to the top, but just as he went to check on Sasuke he burst out of the water using a kanai forced Naruto's razor maelstrom out of his hand into the water. This upset him because that sword was irreplaceable it had Gobi's power over all elemental affinities but a piece of him was in it. Back with Ryuho and Kazuma had placed Kimaro's lifeless body in a crater that Kazuma had made earlier and were burying him when the hole filled with living sand and a figure walked out of the wood. He had red hair a tattoo on his forehead and carrying a gourd. Gara, is that you? Ryuho and Kazuma asked in unison. Do I know either of you? Gara asked them both. You don't know me because I live inside the seal on Naruto's stomach my name is Kazuma or you might know me by the name that this world gave me Kayubi. Kazuma said receiving a half surprised and half I don't care look from Gara. But you do know Ryuho there or should I say Lee? He said as Gara's eye widened when he heard Ryuho was Lee. Yes I was Lee until they found a suppression seal on me, but I still don't remember who I was but that enough about me what brings you here Gara? Ryuho asked. Our village owes your village a department of gratitude and I owe Naruto my life for opening my eyes, he said in his emotionless tone. Back with Naruto now. In a fit of rage he used his lad two bullets on Sasuke but missed both times. But that's where things got bad. Sasuke taking advantage of Naruto not having any more bullet began the biggest beat down of Naruto's life. But as Naruto was sent to the bottom of the river he activated stage 2 of his altar. His arm disappeared and reformed to its full glory. A. N. Not going to explain it because it's a pain in the ass if you can't remember read chapter 2. Bursting out of the water and into flight he charged at Sasuke full speed using a shadow shock bullet on Sasuke making him ram into the cavern wall. As the dust cleared there stood Sasuke with curse marks covering his face and had a Chidori in his hand. Before Naruto could react he had said Chidori through his left lung. He collapsed and could hear Sasuke laughing, then everything went black. Do you plan on laying there or do you plan to fight? said a voice. If you hadn't noticed I had a Chidori shoved through my chest, Naruto said in a sarcastic tone. And they say humans really are weak, get up, you need to finish your fight. The voice said. Wait who the hell are you? The room lit up to reveal a blazing hot brimstone cave with two huge red eyes that could scare Kami himself were staring at him. 
The figures walked out of the darkness to reveal a black dragon. But that wasn't what got Naruto it was the ten flailing tails and four extra heads attached to the dragon. What's the matter boy do you fear my presence? The dragon asked. Naruto regained his composure and said, Hell no and you still have not answer my question who are you? You have guts boy. I have many names the destroyer, the span of hell. But most importantly my true name is Nazariu the king of all demons. The dragon gloated. A. N. No comments yes I added myself to the story as two characters but just so you know Naruto's uncle was named after the dragon this is another plot twist. Okay for one why do you have the same name as my uncle? Two am I dead I'm looking at the king of demons for Christ's sake. No you're not dead but as for your uncle he was named after me because his his necrogan activated at birth, said the five-headed dragon. How do you know about the necrogan? Naruto asked coldly. I should know about it because I created it and I had my part in creating the power called Altar Alone with my underlings. Why have you brought me here Lord Nazariu? Aha, uh -huh. there's the respect for me well since you just passed my test I summoned you to save your life for one and offer you a deal. What is the deal? I'll give you the final form of your altar and extreme healing properties in return I get to use your altar as my eyes to your world for I can no longer tread there for the rest of eternity as punishment for allowing the creation of that wretched man Mujo existence so do you accept? Do you even need to ask of course I'll take, Naruto said making the dragon laugh. Man you remind me so much of Kayubi when he was still alive but tell the new Kayubi Kazuma that he will gain his freedom and body back soon. Well that's all I wanted to say you will now go back to your world and finish that fight. The dragon roared and Naruto's world went black. Out in the real world which was only seconds later Sasuke watched Naruto's lifeless body envelope in a black aura and slowly rise upwards into a standing position as his wound from the Chidori healed instantly. But that wasn't the strangest thing chunks of the cavern walls disappeared into a black mist and flew to Naruto transforming his left arm into the same one as the right. But the unexpected really happened Naruto's razor maelstrom shot out of the water and into the cloud of black mist that continued to surround Naruto making visibility of the boy zero. After about a minute the mist dispersed and revealing Naruto completely covered in armor. His head looked like it was a helmet inside a dragon's mouth the only thing you could see in the helmet was Naruto's necrogan flaring. His arms were the same old darkness falls but his upper torso was covered in a thick looking animalistic mechanical armor. From the stomach to his knees he was covered in a scaly like black cloth. On his back his razor maelstrom became his tail but every link was separated into its full stretched length. And from the knees down there was heavy looking armor resembling a dragon's hind legs. Naruto looked at himself in approval as his new altar sent surges of power through his body. This power it's amazing I like it now you're going down Sasuke, he half yelled. Hey kid don't let it go to your head as you can only use it this time for 10 minutes before it starts damaging your body as you need time to adapt and unlock its full power. Is that you Lord Nazariu? No it's you long lost grandmother now continue the fight and win. Sasuke jumped back at Naruto's altar change. Just because you made a costume change doesn't mean you can still beat me loser. Sasuke shouted flashing through several hand signs while screaming in his head. Fire style. Grand fireball jutsu sending a massive fireball at Naruto. Naruto smirked as he jumped up and slashed his tail towards the fireball yelling, Uzumaki, Namikaze art. Necro Maelstrom, as his tail became a vortex of wind blades metal and hell fire. The attack cut straight through the fireball and sent Sasuke into the cavern wall. By this time Naruto's left side went numb. So you have a power that makes you special so die but yours seems to have taken a toll larger than mine dose me. Sasuke said walking out of the dust. His skin was now darker and he had a shuriken shaped mark in the middle of his face. And his hair had grown and turned purple. Finally two arms with webbed hands sprouted from his back making it look like wings. Even in this form I have a time limit so let's let the final attack decide the battle what do you say looser? I couldn't agree with you more bastard, Naruto replied as both a Risan hell bullet formed in his hand and two dragon wings sprouted out of his back. Both ninjas tool flight at each other with their respective jutsus aiming at each other. They clashed and it was a battle of supremacy until both jutsu backlashed Makin a large sphere of energy distorting the waterfall. While inside memories of the past ran through their minds making them respect each other more. But the energy faded leaving only Sasuke standing holding his arm. 
He took one last look at his friend whose armor was now gone and swore he will get power his way and not his brother's way. But before he limped away his headband fell off next to Naruto's sword. About five minutes later Kakashi arrived to find Naruto unconscious. Thanking God his little brother was alive he scooped him and his weapons plus Sasuke's headband and set off back to Konoha. Naruto woke and found himself in Kazuma's chair, bed. He walked outside to see Kazuma had just smashed a rock against old street sign and growled. Kazuma what's crawled up your ass to make you pissed off? You were hurt and I couldn't help you. I couldn't help my friend when he was in trouble that hurts deep. Kazuma said with a tear rolling down his face. There was nothing you could do that was my fight anyways. Naruto said patting Kazuma on the back. But then Naruto remembered what he wrapped Demon Lord had told him. Tell the new Kayubi that he will soon be free and have his body back he must have meant Kazuma one foot Naruto thought. Naruto are you okay it's not your style to think unless you have an idea or we have just had a large conversation. Kazuma said as Naruto snapped out of his thought and looked at Kazuma seriously. Kazuma during my fight I was struck with Sasuke's Chidori and I should have died but instead I was summoned to someone. Naruto said explaining what had happened with the demon lord. The last thing he told me was tell the new Kayubi he will soon be free and will have his body back. Well that's strange I guess I was Kayubi for a while but I'm no longer a fox anymore. Yeah but if he dose mean you I wonder what he'll do, Naruto said thinking, but before he could really think about it there was a small tremor and the sky went dark for a few seconds. But as it finished a figure walked out of the shadows. He looked like he was in his late twenties and had jet black. He wore a black leather trench coat opened up to reveal his bare ripped figure. And wore anbu grade black pants. Naruto could feel the mon's chakra and it was not human. Naruto took a stance ready to fight along with Kazuma but the man just chuckled. What's the matter boy don't recognize me after all we did make a deal. The man spoke in a demonic voice that belonged to one person Naruto had met. Naruto fell to one knee to show his respect. Forgive me Lord Nazariu I did not know it was you. Stand boy all demons have a human form and as of right now you are my equal but you still must address me formally other than that you're free to do or say anything you wish. Nazariu said walking up to Naruto and Kazuma. Lord Nazariu you did say something about freeing the new Kayubi what did you mean? Naruto asked curiously. What I said is what I meant as for Kayubi he is standing right next to you. He said as Naruto looked at Kazuma then smiled happily. How do we do that Lord Nazariu? Kazuma asked in a grateful yet confused tone. Simple it will take me three hours to charge enough chakra through the seal to both break and release you after that I become part of the boy's altar. After Nazaria's statement Naruto began to fade. He woke up to see Hinata's smiling face but she was also crying tears of joy as she smashed her face to his giving him the most passionate kiss of their relationship. Naruto I'm so glad you're okay I don't know what I'd do if you were dead, she cried into her shoulder. Don't cry angel I told you I'm not dying I still have to marry you, he said kissing her not caring that Tsunade and Shizun had just walked into the room. Well I do like an occasional romance novel this is going a little far don't you think so Shizun? Tsunade said receiving a giggle from her assistant. Yeah well I am allowed to kiss my fiance aren't I? Naruto asked. Yes but you still failed your first mission as Jonin but with the recovery of the Uchiha's headband it is not a total loss. But I want your verbal status of what happened on this mission now, she stated wanting answers. Naruto told her everything down to the last detail even about Nazariu. Tsunade was astonished as he had met the king of demons and made the deal gaining more for what was asked for. Naruto that is one hell of a battle you had but I'm keeping you in the hospital until Kazuma is released like you said but I do have my doubts about this. So what has happened with my team? Naruto asked. They they've all received minor injuries other than that they are fine. Tsunade said beginning to leave the room. Oh other than you Hinata he is not allowed to have any visitors, she said leaving them alone. Two hours and fifty five minutes had passed as they held each other close but that's when the Hyuga council walked in with three other main branch members. Lord Uzumaki we would appreciate if you step away from Miss Hinata she has both been reinstated as the heir to the Hyuga clan but has been arranged to marry as well, one of the elders said calmly. Sorry to burst your bubble but Hinata is my fiancé and I'm not giving her up, Naruto said coldly as he enraged one of the elder Hyuga. Listen boy we need her power to be reborn into our clan if you do not hand her over we will take her by force. 
the Hyuga elder said in rage leaving the room followed by the rest of the elders leaving Naruto and the three main branch Hyuga members. Are you really going to listen to them? Naruto asked the men grabbing his razor maelstrom. We have no choice we will be publicly humiliated then executed if we fail to get the young miss, the middle Hyuga replied before trying to send a chakra filled strike to Naruto's heart. But stopped as Naruto was engulfed in light as a figure flew out of him punching said Hyuga. The other two Hyugas were horrified as their cousin Sad sent through the wall by an unknown figure. The light died to reveal Kazuma standing in his full human glory. Yes I have my body back, Kazuma yelled in joy. They prepared to fight the remaining two Hyugas when Tsunade came rushing through the door. What the hell happened here? She said rage visible on her face. We were attacked by these Hyugas forced by the Hyuga Council, Naruto said as Tsunade groaned. Follow me you three we're going to the Konoha council meeting that we are expected at, Tsunade said as Naruto Kazuma and Hinata followed her to the Hokage tower, but before they entered the meeting hall Tsunade stopped them. Naruto I originally came to get you because the council want you to take the Usumaki and Namikaze seat in the council nut right now they want to do a trial on Kazuma and Ryuho to determine if they should be made into a clan and put under the clan resurrection act, she said shocking Kazuma and Naruto at what might happen. Naruto walked into the room to see all the clan heads sitting down in a row in font of a small set of chairs. Ah Lord Namikaze so glad you could make it, one of the Hyuga elders he had met earlier who was taking over for Hiyashi said. Kind pf glad to be here, Naruto said taking a seat next to Sume in Azuka. Inoichi Yamanaka stood up and motioned to let their visitors in. Both Lee and Kazuma entered the room. Kazuma and Ryuho aka Kayubi and Rock Lee you have been summoned here because you have a rare Keke Jenke from another world and we are to determine whether or not you should become a clan, he said receiving a glare from Naruto who had wondered how they knew who Kazuma was. If I may I vote they do be instated as a clan for I know them both and they would want this, Naruto said as Kazuma grinned and Ryuho gave a thumbs up in appreciation. I vote no on this we do not need more clans in Konoha. The Hyuga elder said as two more no's could be heard Hamura and Kaharu. This made the other five clan leaders smile evilly. I vote yes. Chorused through the room from the other leaders pissing off the Hyuga elder off. Very well Kazuma Ryuho you are official clan and are given the rank of Janin and given the clan name Aratameru and you must have a minimum of two wives in three years or wives will be appointed for you. Kaharu in a displeased tone dismissing the boys. Naruto stood up to address the rest of the council. Fellow council members I have two matter that needs to be taken care of. Choza Akamichi looked at Naruto and smiled. Lord Namikaze you have the floor. Thank you Lord Akamichi. Just call me Choza. Okay, starting yesterday two attempts have been made on my life by the Hyuga clan to take my fiance who they disowned from the clan after she had had a heart attack almost killing her. He said gaining the only five council members who cared attention, off on our mission to find Lord Hokage she was found to have a long lost Keke Jenke called the Tears of Rebirth, and somehow the Hyugas have found out and are trying to turn her into a breading factory. Naruto's statement both discussed the five clan leader and made their dislike of the Hyuga clan grow. Is this true Lord Hyuga? Sume Inazuka asked. It is we need that Keke Jenke to stay in the clan's bloodline it is sacred for it has the power to heal any wound to any disease. The Hyuga elder said as Hamura and Kaharu agreed. It does not matter anymore Lord Hyuga your clan disowned her and another took her in and has both proposed and accepted which protects her in the clan resurrection act, Shinoru Aburame said enraging the Hyuga. You have no right telling me that she is a Hyuga and she will marry a Hyuga that's tradition and that's how it will stay. The elder Hyuga shouted. I'm going to say this once if you so much as touch the girl you will be executed and the Hyuga clan will no longer have power in this council as of right now she has the protection of the Inazuka clan. Sume said as others joined in. And the Yamanaka clan. Inoichi said with pride. And the Nara clan. Shikaku said muttering, troublesome. And the Akamichi clan. Choza said protecting the young girl. And the Aburame clan. Shinoru said in a usual emotionless tone heard only from his clan. The elder Hyuga then stormed out of the room followed by Hamura. The other clan leaders laughed their asses off as they had finally got back at the jackasses that were the Hyugas. Lord Namikaze you still have the floor, 
Kaharu said in a very displeased tone as seeing her friend lose their chance at greatness. Yes the second issue is the Uchiha clan. Naruto said shocking all the clan leaders. I know Sasuke is gone but after Lord Sarutobi died he gave me a secret mission and telling me the truth about the Uchiha massacre that occurred five years ago. Please Lord Namikaze what do you mean by the truth? Choza asked confused as were the rest of the council. Yes five years ago Itachi Uchiha was a double agent for both Serutobi and the Uchiha clan. The Uchiha clan was planning a coup so they could turn me into a living weapon. Itachi told Serutobi and in return he ordered the assassination of the clan. But Itachi could not do it so he went to Madara Uchiha to do it. The clan was destroyed leaving three Uchihas left. But Itachi was ordered to leave the village as a missing nin until now. Naruto said holding up a copy of the pardon as proof of his speech. Lord Namikaze your speech sound a little far-fetched how do you know we can trust him? Kaharu asked. The only thing I can offer is he has kept the organization Akasuki from time and again from capturing me and getting to the village. Naruto said getting a shocked expression from the clan leaders. And do you have proof of this claim? Asked Sume Inazuka. As a matter of fact I do. Naruto said handing a scroll over to Sume. This was given to me by Itachi the day he staged his attempt to capture me it holds how he has saved the village and me countless times. Naruto said gaining nods from all the clan leaders as they read the scroll. Very well Lord Namikaze. However we do wish a meeting with Itachi the day he returns other than that I hear call this council meeting closed. Kaharu said allowing the others to leave the meeting hall. Naruto returned home to be tackled down and put in a headlock by Kazuma. You did it kid I'm proud of ya. He said giving Naruto a rug burn on his scalp. Yes my friend we are very grateful that you did this for us. Said the Lee half of Ryuho who had calmed down after three hours of yelling yay or springtime of youth. Yes well now that you are free Kazuma you can do whatever you like and you can now use your altar when you like so you win in two ways. Naruto said walking into the dining room to see Hinata placing dinner on the table. She looked up to him and smiled. How did it go? Wonderful the Hyuga clan can no longer pursue you as you are protected by the Akamichi clan, Inazuka clan, Yamanaka clan, and Aburame clan as of today. He said as Hinata jumped over the table and tackled him down giving him the most passionate kiss by far. Thank you Naruto you saved me again I owe you so much but you ask for nothing in return. She said with crystal tears falling down her face. But you are wrong there I do ask of two things of you one marry me, she nodded as she already said she would. And to follow your dreams as no one can take those away from you, he said as more tears ran down her face. I will I promos I will, she said crying into his shoulder. Two weeks of training pasted as if it were nothing and Ryuho getting better at both communicating with his altar and fighting alongside it which was a large feat. But then came the day when Itachi was to return to the village. The altar trio walked to the gate as they had guard duty just for this occasion. Eight hours passed by quickly as they resorted to a game of poker to pass the time. It was one of those days where no one came through the village. But that soon changed as two figures appeared over the horizon. They slowly approached the gates and turned out to be Itachi and his jolly blue friend Kisame. Itachi and Kisame we have been expecting you were to put these on and be escorted by us, Naruto said handing them to a set of anbu clothing. But they were also given a mask of a weasel and a shark. Hey kid is this some kind of joke? Kisame asked going to grab his bandaged halberd. On the contrary me and Naruto have sent a recommendation for you to be a Konoha ninja if you wish, Kazuma said as this made Kisame's shark-like smile grow bigger. The incognito missing ninjas followed Naruto Kazuma and Ryuho to the Hokage tower to see Tsunade. As they entered they were greeted by Shizune who didn't seem the least bit scared of Itachi or Kisame. But Itachi was stunned by the young girl's beauty. If he didn't have the mask on everyone would know that he had found her attractive. Good you have arrived as Naruto said you would I have to say I thought you would never return. Tsunade said allowing them to remove their masks. Itachi you have been pardoned for your crime but you have a council hearing to determine your intention and rank you will receive. I understand Lord Hokage and thank you for trusting me to return. He said kneeling down to show her respect. That is quite alright Itachi. As for you Kisame you have been asked to be a Konoha Nin but your coup with the Mizukage has us at a fault we do not know your intentions so you also have a hearing with the council to determine your fate, she said scaring Kisame a little. Naruto Ryuho and Kazuma entered the council chamber taking their seat representing their clans. 
Kazuma decided he would have to act like he knew what everyone was talking about but could not even if he was one of the two representatives of the Aratameru clan. Ryuhou told him it was all right he would help him if he really needed it. Itachi and Kisame were brought in and sat down in the blinding light so they could not see the council members. Itachi Uchiha even though you have been pardoned we have a few questions for you, said one of the voices. First as we were told you joined the organization Akasuki is to protect Konoha is this true? said another voice that sounded animalistic. Yes this is true they wished to destroy the village so they could both capture Naruto Uzumaki and eliminate a threat to their plans, he said not holding back on the details that were given to him. Do you know the identity or location of their leader? asked another deep voice. Sorry but I do not we have only met with a hologram jutsu that he had issued and his figure was always blackened so finding out his identity was impossible, he said sorrow clearly visible in his voice. Last question what are your intentions now that you have returned to Konoha? asked a sincere voice that you could tell it was Naruto's. I wish to once again be a shinobi and to revive my clan to its old glory but teach that power is not a thing to be used unless needed to protect loved ones and the safety of the village. This made the council beam with pride as they knew what he meant was true. Itachi Uchiha you will be informed by a council member later today what your rank and status as a shinobi shall be you are now dismissed, another voice said allowing him to leave. Now on to you Kisame Hoshigaki you have been labeled a missing ninja after you tried to overthrow the Mizukage tells us first what is your relationship with Itachi Uchiha? asked a hateful voice. Itachi saved me from certain death after I escaped from the failed coup, Dita I owe him my life and more, Kisame said truthfully. Now tell us why did you attempt the coup, asked the female animalistic voice. The Mizukage ordered the, seven swordsmen of the mist, to aid in killing all village clans but also told us to destroy our own and in return we would be spared but we could not we planned his assassination but we failed, Kisame said with a sad face. Last question why should we trust you? asked a female voice. I will serve your Hokage as long as I live to stop the hunter Nin and help protect this village from harm with all of my being, he said kneeling announcing his loyalty to the village and Hokage. Very well you hereby are given the rank of Jonin and if we may ask did your clan have a Keke Jenke? A cold yet welcoming voice asked, Eh, hey, N. I know you know who this is. Yes my clan at birth takes the appearance of any animal if first touches giving them the same senses the animal does, he said hoping to get out of there. Very well you are also placed under the clan resurrection act you have three years to find a minimum of two wives or we will appoint them for you, you are now dismissed, said a female voice. He left and the council began to deliberate, what should Itachi's rank be, asked Sume. I say we give him his old rank back he will make an excellent Anbu captain who has seen the worst in life and has more knowledge of the outside environment and enemy tactic, said Naruto as he had this plan all along. Very good idea Lord Namikaze, said Choza. Please just call me Naruto Lord Namikaze makes me feel older than I am, he said making Choza smile. All in favor say, I, all oppose say, Nai said Inoichi as eight eyes were heard and three nyes. Well now that that is decided Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze you are to tell Itachi of his rank and he is under watch for the time being, said Kaharu. With that the meeting ended and Naruto Kazuma and Ryuhou collected Kisame who was pleased with his rank and status and went in search of Itachi. He was later found in the Uchiha district at the graveyard praying for forgiveness to his mother and the other non-shinobi Uchihas. He was really shook up about them. Itachi I'm truly sorry for your loss, Naruto said placing his hand on Itachi's shoulder followed by Kazuma Ryuhou and Kisame. But the good news is you have your old rank of Anbu captain again but you are to be watched off duty for now on, he said giving Itachi a smile. Hey Naruto if we don't get back soon Anko will try to turn us into pincushions if we're late for dinner again, Kazuma said remembering the first time they were late. Kisame Itachi would you like to join us we already have guests coming and we could use some more? Naruto asked gaining a, hell yes, from Kisame and a, yes please from, Itachi. As they arrived what seemed like a thousand kunais flew at them, but they were all blocked by Kisame's samada, not sure if that is spelled right, and saw Anko with a kunai in her mouth ready to send more. Kisame blushed since he never saw anyone except Zabuza use a kunai so sadistically and let said person live. Hey little bro mind explaining why you have come home with two triple s rank missing ninjas following you, 
she asked Naruto. They aren't missing Nin, they are now fully certified ninjas of Konoha as of today and I invited them to dinner, Naruto said as she smirked and blushed looking at Kisame who she thought wasn't too bad looking. Naruto and the gang walked into the dining room and saw Shizun Tsunade and Jiraiya had taken their seats at the table. Itachi took a seat next to Shizun blushing making her blush as well. Kisame took a seat next to Anko with a nervous look on his face. They told Anko the situation and she bumped Naruto on the head for not asking her to help but was glad he succeeded. They went on for hours getting to know the two new nin who in turn learned a lot about their saviors. But most of the time Itachi either blinked like crazy or griped his eye. Hey kid looks like he's going blind you should help him, said Nazariu. How do I do that? From what I have learned over a century the Sharingan of watching the Uchiha, S.I.s were born of Kazuma's alter power given to him by the other side and when they obtain Monginkyo the power slowly escapes, he said gaining a gasp from Naruto. If what you're saying is true both Kazuma and Ryuho are over a hundred years old, Naruto said both amazed and shocked. Yes well Kazuma and Ryao's power put them in a sort of hibernation until their bodies were used to this world but we are getting off subject heal his eyes by pouring your altar power into it, Nazariu said cutting the mental connection. Later that night Naruto was escorting Itachi home like Tsunade had ordered him when Naruto asked him, Itachi how would you like to have your sight back? I would like that but only the Kayubi is believed to do that and he does not exist anymore, Itachi said. But he did and I got a way to fix them if you would like me to, Naruto asked telling him of Nazariu and how he told him of the method of healing his eyes. I'll take it but you said he contacts you but he is in hell how can he do that, Itachi asked. I have no clue but I need you to lay down for I do not know what will happen during this process, Naruto said as Itachi laid down on a futon in his house. Itachi activated his Sharingan and Naruto started pouring his altar power into Itachi's eye. Pain swept through Itachi's eyes as they changed to the Monginkyo. But the three-sided shuriken design in his eyes changed again. It had evolved yet again to a power only one Uchiha had cheated to gain. But Itachi had earned it he now had the power of the mange Monginkyo Sharingan. The pain died from Itachi's eyes and he found that he could see better than ever. He could even see the chakra radiating off of people. He ran to a mirror and what he saw made him gasp. His Mangekyo Sharingan had no longer been IH the shape of a three pronged shuriken but looked like three chain like tomos linked together around the pupil of the eye. What the hell happened to your eyes, Itachi? Naruto asked. I have no idea, he said, but just then little chunks of the floor dispersed and formed Naruto's fist against his will, and his arm shot up to eye level, and in the middle of the palm, a demonic red eye opened. I can answer that, said the eye. Lord Nazariu, is that you? Naruto asked a little scared. Yes my boy and to answer your question the only way you could have saved the Uchiha's eyes was to activate the final stage of the Sharingan which is called the Mange Monginkyo. That only Madara Uchiha has activated by cheating his way to it, Nazariu said gaining Itachi's attention. If I may be so bold Lord Nazariu what does it do? Itachi asked. Very good question my boy it is only second in power next to the Kachu Necrogan. A. N. Get this it mean Kachu the same as Naruto and Maelstrom cool huh? But that still doesn't tell us what it does my lord, Naruto stated. Well the mange can teleport the person wherever they want as so can the Kachu second it can control souls to do its bidding and finally it can transfer your soul along with the mange into a separate body, Nazariu told the two. But what can the Kachu do my lord, Naruto asked. The only person I've allowed to activate the Kachu was your uncle for he showed both respect for the power and protected the ones her loved. As you do now Naruto one day I will allow you to use it but you still should now what it does. It can freeze time only for escape purposes teleport the user grants the user and spouses long life and can see the good and evil in people as well as read thoughts. But finally it can open the gate to the other side without the body damage and can take you there but only for a day's time, Nazariu finished. That means Kazuma and Ryuho have a way home, Naruto said happily. No it doesn't their bodies have gotten used to this world if they go back for more than a day they will die, Nazariu said warning Naruto. Till then train and fight to protect I will be here to help but for now I must sleep talk to you later, Nazariu said disappearing from Naruto's hand. The next day Naruto Kazuma and Ryuho were called by Tsunade. 
As they arrived they saw both Jiraiya and Itachi who was on his first day back on active duty standing behind Tsunade. Good you're here we have gotten word that both the Akasuki and Orochimaru have started moving this is where you three come in. Tsunade said motioning Itachi to hand them each a folder. I am sending you three on a three year training, sabotage mission tacking Orochimaru won't be easy so you must take where he has been and either liberate or destroy it any complaints. Yeah grandma me and Hanada are getting married into years how do you think we are going to get married if I'm not here? Naruto asked. Hey Brad we will be gone from the village two years and the last one will be spent being trained by Konoha elite. Jiraiya said making Naruto calm down. But how dose that protein to me and Ryuho? we can't use chakra and our altars are valuable to this village now, Kazuma stated. That is true but you three will be given aliases for you can track Orochimaru's energy better than any shinobi in this village so from now on Ryuho, you are now Rock Lee, Kazuma you are now Tachibona Aratameru, and Naruto you are now Necro Kachu you have one week to say your goodbyes and gather supplies. You are now dismissed? Tsunade said as everyone left except Naruto. Tsunade how do you know about Kachu? Naruto asked coldly. It is another form of your first name Naruto why so worked up about it? She asked. It is also the name of the second form of my Necrogan but I have not activated it yet so keep this secret for now. Naruto said walking out the door. Naruto walked home telling his family the news and they were devastated especially Hinata who wouldn't let go of Naruto the rest of the night. The week went by fast and it was every bit depressing as they thought it would be but they pushed that away. Naruto gave Hinata on last passionate kiss telling her he would write every chance he got. Then the group of four made on their way for their joyride we call life. One year had pasted and a trio of friends walked back to their camp. They had just finished a huge fight when two girls appeared from out of a tent. They talked down the long green haired teen and the brown haired boy. Tachibona you promised to be back an hour ago you don't want me to kick to her ass again do to you? The blonde girl asked. No Yageto I'm good I'm sore because that fight took longer than expected, said Tachibona. Well Lee is this true? The other girl with long black hair asked. Yes Tarani they were Jonan level shinobi and they almost got us this time. Lee said as both girls squealed at their strong men and tackled them down. This made the blonde member of the trio chuckle. Can it necro at least we have girlfriends, Tachibona said before realizing that was a big mistake. Necro looked down hiding his tears. Necro he didn't mean it you know that, Yageto said trying to cheer him up. Yes friend do not let insults get you down, Lee said placing a hand on Necro's shoulder. It's okay guys I'll see her soon we only have 9 months before we return to the village, Necro said. So girls where is sensei? Lee asked. We have no clue where the old pervert is he was not here when we got back, Yageto said snorting. Hey has anyone seen Kit? Necro asked. Yeah he's in the tent sleeping, Tarani said as a little fox kid ran out of one of the three tents and jumped on Necro's shoulder wrapping its tail around Necro's neck purring. Hey little guy miss me? Necro asked as it yipped licking his cheek. Just then a white haired man fell from a tree with a smile on his face. Necro Tachibona Lee we leave now I have located Nazariu, the man said packing his bag. Are you sure sensei? asked Necro. Positive he lives in a cave 20 miles north of here so hurry up and let's get going. It didn't take long for them clear the campsite but they were unsure about what this man would be like. After about two hours of running at ninja speed they came to a limestone cave. It was massive and smooth as if someone blazed through it. But up on entering the cave they were all hit by a genjutsu. Necro immediately released it but it was in layers and seemed to reinforce. Necro channeled some chakra into his eyes and sure enough a man with shoulder length hair wearing a ninja style black jacket and bougrade pants and a red spiral on each sleeve of the jacket. Listen and Usumaki still lives, Necro shouted. The man immediately stopped the genjutsu and looked at him. How do you know an Usumaki other than myself lives? said the man. Necro tied a note to a kanai and threw it at his feet. The man picked up and read it. It had five words on it. I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. And how do I know this is true? asked the man. This, Necro said as his ocean blue eyes became black with a blood red four point shuriken in the middle with each point in each direction with a red tomo at each point. The man fell to his knees and tears of joy fell down his face. 
He ran to Necro and wrapped his arms around him pulling him into a big hug. He continued to cry gripping the boy closer. Show, King not Bree, Thing, Necro gasped out as the man let go. Tell me nephew where have you been if you survived? The man asked. That is classified when we're out in the open Uncle Nazariu, Necro said. Well come on in my house it is protected by the most powerful seals there are, Nazariu said leading the four men and the two women into the large cottage at the end of the cave. They entered and all sound from the outside were gone. So nephew what brings you to seek me out now instead of looking for me years ago? Asked Nazariu. Necro began the story back to his birth. He told him of Kazuma who would put his two cents in before Yageto bonked him on the head. Then he told him of the king of demons Nazariu in which Nazariu had a good laugh. Then he finished off the story of his inventions. Well Naruto you and your friends have been through a lot including Kazuma there but really why do you come to me now? Well I need help training my Necrogan and in the family's taijutsu and you weren't easy to find either it took us a better part of a year to find you, Naruto said. I'll train you but it will take over two years to master them both, Nazariu said waiting for a hell no. Well I can cut that time in half for I have a jutsu that can give me the experience quickly, Naruto said biting his thumb making one blood clone. A forbidden art impressive but you don't have to worry either I have placed a special jutsu on this cave that makes time move faster than the outside world we can begin your training tomorrow and if Kazuma and Ryuho like to join in I'm okay with that seeing as you two are just as close to family, Nazariu said inviting them. Sorry but we still have work to do we will be back once a month to check up on Naruto here and test his progress. Said Jiraiya gaining a groan from Ryuho and Kazuma. I hate to admit it but the old fart is right we still need to complete our mission or no pay when we return to the village. Kazuma said walking to the door hiding his tears. Yes friend we must eliminate the evils Mujo has created or he could do something terrible. Ryuho stated following Kazuma with Yageto and Tarani following close behind. Naruto walked to the edge of the cave saying his last goodbyes to them before they left Kazuma turned around and said. Necro you better get stronger because I'm going to kick your ass when we get back, Kazuma stated. You can dream Tachibona. Liyu and Yageto keep him out of trouble okay, Naruto said. Will do friend, Ryuho said walking away. You have some pretty loyal friends there Necro, Nazariu said. Yes I do, Naruto said proudly. Eight months pasted like it was nothing but for Naruto it was over a year and a half as what his uncle said was true. He had gone through a great change also his hair grew till it just about reached his shoulders and his whisker birthmarks grew thicker he trained his ass off and every two months cave time Kazuma and Ryuho would show up and they would have a big showdown to see who was best. It ended in a tie every time for they did not use their alders just bare fist fighting. But as the time passed Naruto mastered all his uncle had to teach him. But as time moved on it was time to leave. So uncle are you sure you do not wish to return to the village? Naruto asked sadly. I'm sure it holds too many painful memories but I will write but this is for you if you ever activate Kachu this will tell you the risks and advantages, Nazariu said handing him a scroll. Naruto gave his uncle one last hug goodbye and left on the road to meet up with Kazuma and Ryuho. After about a day's run Naruto net up with Ryuho Kazuma Yageto and Tarani. Kazuma hadn't changed much other than he was more muscular. But Ryuho had changed quite a bit high green hair reached to his shoulders and he was a little more muscular but the thing that got Naruto was every time he took a step there was a large thump. But another thing he noticed Yageto and Tarani were walking slower rubbing their stomachs. Tachibona Lee how was the hunt? Naruto asked. Other than a few sound camps nothing we spent nine months and nothing, Kazuma whined. Yes but if you remember Tachibana we did free a few villages and destroyed a few facilities of Mujo's plus we couldn't endanger Tarani and Yageto because of their condition, Ryuho stated. Conditions what do you maya? Oh I get it now congratulations guys how far along are they? Naruto asked. Tarani 4 months Yageto 3, Ryuho said answering Naruto's question. Yeah and even Kunoichi's during pregnancy have redouble walking. Necro you wouldn't have brought it would you? Kazuma asked. As a matter of fact I did but we never had a chance to use it, Naruto said unsealing a small storage scroll from his glove. Then he unsealed a larger scroll about the size size of the one on Jiraiya's back. And with a swipe of blood from Naruto's thumb the chakra jeep appeared. That's great but there are only four seats one of us will have to hoof it, Kazuma stated. 
I'll run but to keep up I'll need you to store my weights Necro. Ryuho said taking the weights from his legs and handed them to Naruto. Jez Li these weigh a ton how much weight are these? Naruto asked. 800 pounds each. Damn you really are sadistic to your legs, Naruto said sealing the weights away. The girls got in the back of the jeep and Kazuma got in the passenger's side while Naruto started the car. Taking off Ryuho was beside the car the whole time it was moving. About an hour of driving Naruto decided to start a conversation. You know Tachibona Lee all this time Yageto and Tarani has been with our group but two have never told me how you guys met, Naruto said gaining smirks. Well me and Tarani met after we were separated in sea country, Ryuho said remembering back to the day they met. Flashback and it will be worth it, Ryuho had woken up after he thought he had drowned in the ocean after the laboratory collapsed. Still in pain he got on his feet and walked outside the small hut to see the small village he was in was poor yet peaceful. Taking a few steps he fell to the ground. But a young girl about 17 with long black hair wearing civilian style attire rushed to his aid. Sir you shouldn't move you're still badly injured and if the shinobi see you they will kill you. Don't worry about me what happened to this village, Ryuho asked. About a year ago ninja from the sound village have been terrorizing us and taking three people or newborn babies each month to a man named Orochimaru for his experiments, the young girl said helping Ryuho onto the futon. I should have my strength back soon and I swear a blood oath that evil shall be d-e-f-e-t-e-d, -E -E Ryuho shouted coldly. Sir what is your name? the girl asked. Rock Lee what is yours beautiful? Ryuho asked making the girl blush. Tarani Hitsuguya. She replied. Ryuho was out for a good two weeks before finally recovering. But during that time his relationship with Tarani blossomed they learned about each other. Tarani was a certified genin from a small ninja village that was destroyed by enemy forces. But as they grew fond of each other the day came that changed everything. The day was as peaceful as could be but then two sound janin burst through the front door taking them by surprise nailing the both with tranquilizer darts knocking Ryuho and Tarani out. Several hours later Ryuho awoke to find himself chained to a wall and he was being guarded by two sound shunin. He acted like he was asleep trying to come up with a plan, but that's when he heard. Hey did you hear the boss said that we could do whatever we wanted to the girl that was captured as long as we keep her alive for the Otokage what do you think? I say after our shift ends in 5 minutes we head right over there and have some fun. Hearing this Ryao's rage grew to a new level. His shackles and most of the wall behind him dispersed and formed Zetsue. Being silent, Ryuho jabbed his hands through the wall where the Chunin and ripped through their chests, ripping out their hearts in a very bloody yet justified way. Both him and Zetsue walked down the hallway to Tarani's cell, either killing or mortally wounding every shinobi in their path. But when he got to her cell, she was gone. He walked up to a Chunin who was barely alive from a spine shattering kick in the back from Ryuho. Where is the girl who was in this cell? He asked coldly promising death. The boss came and took her he said he had first dibs. Where do I find him? Ryuho demanded. Third floor but they are all heavily guarded you'll never make it. But Ryuho thought otherwise taking a kanai and stabbing it through the chunin's eye socket. Feeling he still had his backpack on under his special cloak which placed a genjutsu around him making him look like his old self he pulled out a pair of Ryao's wings and put them together strapping it to his left arm he dashed at high speeds to the third floor. Most of the ninja on each floor being either Chunin to Anbu level only saw a blur before they met a very bloody end. The halls were stained by blood but Ryuho didn't care if these people were willing to sell a human life for a paycheck that made them evil and evil needed to be destroyed. He made his way to the leader of the facility's room to find him standing over Tarani's less than decent body grinning like a madman as Ryuho and Zetsue sliced through the door. Step away from the girl now, he demanded coldly. What are you going to do kill me ha you look too weak to take on half my troop, the man said laughing. Ryuho was not amused he snapped his fingers and Zetsue sent the man outside with it powerful ribbons. Lee walked over to Tarani's unconscious form taking his cloak covering her modesty. Then he jumped through the hole in the wall followed by Zetsue to engage the man. If you don't think I couldn't take on any of your men then why are they dead? Ryuho said ready to send the evil in front of them to hell. The man slowly rose from the ground with strange marks appearing all over his body. 
You may have beat my men but I'm on a whole other level you cannot defeat a member of the Iwatoshi clan our blood limit allows us to control earth to do anything we want. The Iwatoshi yelled as his body completely transformed into a loin like Fram before it was engulfed by rock earth and metal. And with one slash he cleaved half of Zetsue's body and sent Ryuho through a wall. Now who is the pathetic one as soon as I kill you I'll have my way with the girl then ship her off to Lord Orochimaru for him to use her for him to use her for his experiments. The Iwatoshi said chuckling evilly. But those words was a mistake as something deep inside snapped and a partial memory of him fighting flashed through his mind. Jumping up he removed his weights and in saying one simple name. Zetsue. With that the tiny bit of what was left of Zetsue covered itself in a silver cloak and transformed to something new. He was now no longer human-like except his face. His head had a crown-like shape. Its upper half was human only sporting two rocket-like arms underneath the originals enough. But going to the lower half just where the waist should be two blade wing-like structures coming from both sides and the rest was a snake-like tail with a closed four-bladed propeller at the end. You think that will save you you're wrong, the Iwatoshi yelled taking his claws and slashing down. Ryuho raised his hand and said. My tender fist R-E-S-S-I-N. He yelled as ribbons came from Zetsue's back and formed a drill slicing through the giant claw flying at him. Ryuho jumped on Zetsue's tail and disappeared from sight before the Iwatoshi's next attack hit him. Zetsue and Ryuho appeared behind the Iwatoshi and once again raised his head yelling. My vigorous fists G-A-R-Y-U-U and F-U-K-U-R-Y-U-U. He yelled as the two rocket-like arms shot off destroying most of the Iwatoshi's armor-like form. Ryuho jumped down from Zetsue traveling at top speed with his blade ready for the final blow. His body began to radiate a silver light as he sliced through the remaining armored Iwatashi's armor taking his head with it. The fight was over he had taken out a small army and their leader and liberated a small village he thought before he collapsed. The next day he bid the villagers farewell leaving, but as he reached the road Tarani stopped him. Please Lee take me with you I care about you too much to lose you, she shouted. Sure I care for you as well and I can use some company on the search for my friends, he said as she squealed and grabbed onto his arm smiling happily. End flashback. Wow Lee that was really not in your character you usually avoid kill, Naruto said amazed. Hey yeah that was almost the same way I met Yagedo except without killing or the waking up in the girl's house, Kazuma said retelling his story. Flashback this is worth it otherwise I wouldn't write it. Kazuma slowly made his way down the road to find two men in black cloaks with red clouds on them one was makes so all you saw were his eyes and the other had white hair carrying a scythe. He saw them defeat a young blonde cloud Kunoichi then taking her what looked like a hostage. Kazuma could not let them do this his code would not allow it. He may have done some things in the past that he was not proud of but he would make up for it here. Hey freak with the scythe and no face wonder but the girl down and you won't get hurt, Kazuma yelled. Look he dan a new heart for my collection I wonder what element he is, the masked man said. Who cares Kakuzu as long as I can spill his blood for Lord Jashin and get the Nikomanda secured, the man named he dan said laughing evilly. So the girl's a jinchurikin which means you're with Akasuki that gives me even more of a reason to fight and I ain't lossin to you freaks so bring it on, Kazuma said as his arm dispersed out of existence reforming into his oh so famous shell bullet and the propeller on his back started spinning pulling him into flight as he charged at him full furry yelling. Shell bullet burst. Hidan and Kakuzu were amazed by Kazuma's power. But they weren't going to lose they both went through a series of hand signs and cried out in unison. Ninja art. Lightning cannon. Jutsu. As two large bolts of energy shot at Kazuma. But unfortunately for Kazuma his arm acted like a lighting rod shocking him making his body feel like jelly. Ha huh, the punk wasn't so strong after all would you do the honors of carving out his heart he dan? Kakuzu said as black thread like tentacle wrapped around Kazuma's neck lifting him in the air. With pleasure Lord Jashin will love this sacrifice in his name, he dan said raising his scythe ready to carve Kazuma to shreds. Looks like this is it I'm gonna die well I lived a good life I'll see you soon Konami. But then the memories of Konami's dying words telling him to live and find love as well as the faces of his new family flashed through his mind. That was then this is now I will live I can't die and I don't care about the past. He mentally yelled as his body began to glow gold. He punched Kakuzu and jumped back. Hidan what is this power flowing from him? Kakuzu asked. 
I do not know but it might kill you so stand back, he said drawing a circle around him as his skin turned to that of a Halloween skeleton makeup. Kazuma was feeling the power that he believed he gave to Naruto. He felt powerful again, as his left arm formed a shell bullet. His chest covered itself in a gold armor breastplate from there down to right before his legs was covered in a gold and maroon leotard. His legs covered themselves in a guild armor till his feet where they became a loin-like paw, foot on his back a golden fin formed near the once blade-like propeller which was now a tail-like whip. Finally the four pieces of armor on his face became an armored helmet only to leave his eyes and mouth visible and three loins mane like armor helmet top. He then began to walk towards the two scared Akasuki members. Don't come any closer you and I have a blood link thanks to Lord Yashi's circle if you keep advancing I'll cut my head off and you die while I live for I am immortal. Hidan yelled. Kazuma did not stop so Hidan decided to do it. But as his scythe connected with his neck he heard a clink instead of ripping flesh. You fools don't get it I don't care what happens to me as long as I can protect someone so prepare to die by my proud fists. Kazuma yelled as the tail like whip hit the ground sending him flying at Hidan and Kakuzu having a punch to the face that would take down a squadron of Chunin in one blow. The punch sent the two into the forest so Kazuma picked up the girl up and flying off. End flashback. Wow Tachibona you still have some power from the other side that's great and she is a Jinchuriken but how did you to hook up? asked Lee. Well after I saved her she kept asking for a date about two weeks of non-stop asking I caved and we started dating then we found you Lee, Kazuma said. Well look on the bright side we'll be home in less than a week and hopefully sensei will meet us there. Naruto said now focused on the road. A week passed and a lavender-eyed girl with long indigo hair stood at the north gate of Konoha waiting for her love to return. Who was this girl? None other than Hinata Hayuga who had changed so much from her old shy self and time did wonders on her figure. A. N. I'm not going to talk about her assets if you've seen her you know that she is beautiful even if she didn't have them. Hinata was Tsunade's apprentice along with Sakura but unlike her she was first in line to inherit the Tsunade's title as medical chief and slug sonin. Todi she was given the week off from both hospital duty and ninja duty as it was hard to be both an active janin and a head medic. She also had the nickname, Angel of Death, because with her chakra scalpel jutsu and her gentle fist taijutsu one touch was deadly. Today was the day for Naruto to return along with Kazuma and Ryuho. She was overjoyed that the man she loved would be back and would be able to hold her in his arms at night and tell her that she loved her. But as she was fantasizing a fast moving object appeared over the horizon towards the gate. Hanada knew right away that it was Naruto as only his car could move as fast as might guy at full speed with weights on. As they drew closer Hanada could not contain herself anymore and ran to Naruto who was just entering the gate. With a mighty cry of, Naruto. She kissed him passionately with all her bent up feelings of lust and yearning she had bottled up for the last two years. Naruto who had unexpectedly attacked by Hinata which he knew it was her from the way she kissed him returned the kiss full force. They stayed that way on the ground for a good two minutes when Yageto blurted out. Well isn't that the cutest thing you ever did see? Hinata it's so good to see you again there hasn't been a day that has gone by that I haven't thought of you, Naruto said giving her another kiss. Same here Naruto you have missed so much since you left and I don't think you want to miss out on any more, she said kissing him. But that was when Yageto coughed signifying for him to introduce them. Getting up blushing Naruto pulled Hinata close to him to introduce her. Hinata I'd like you to meet both Kazuma's and Ryao's fiancés Yageto Raigen and Tarani Hitsuguya. Nice to meet you at last, Tarani said bowing as well as she could. So you're the famous Hinata Hayuga blonde has been bragging about I thought he was exaggerating when he said you were a goddess in human skin but I see now he did not lie. Yageto said making Hinata blush. It is very nice to meet you both as well I hope we can be friends, Hinata said smiling. If what your letters Naruto reads out loud when thinks no one's around are true we'll both be seeing you with in the next six months. Yageto said rubbing her belly making Hinata gasp the smile congratulating Kazuma and Ryuho. So Angel what have we missed while we were away? asked Naruto. Well Kakashi is dating his old Anbu Latinate Yugo Takashi. Anko is now married to Kisame and are expecting any day now and Itachi proposed to Shizune and she said yes. Hinata said shocking the alter trio to the bone that Anko married. Well before we got something to eat before we go to Tsunade and report we're back. 
Naruto suggested as they all agreed. But they all face faulted when they saw where Naruto wanted to eat, it was none other than Ichiroku Ramon's stand. As they walked an old man Ichiroku dropped his ladle when he saw Naruto. Naruto you're back what would you like the usual or the house special? He asked ready to serve anything. How about 10 house specials and 5 mises? Naruto said shocking to Rani and Yagedo. I heard his love for Ramon was legendary but I always thought it was just a story, Yagedo said. Yeah told you so hun but Naruto there is something I'd like to ask you and Hinata. Kazuma said getting their attention. Well ask away old buddy. A while back when me and Ryuho found out the girls were pregnant we thought that we would like a wedding before they were born but your wedding will be in a month so we were wondering if we could do a joint wedding? Kazuma asked making Hinata's eyes swell up like a balloon and Naruto choke on his Ramon. I don't know I can't make that decision but if Hinata is okay with it so am I okay hun. It's fine it would be fun we could all go to wave country for our honeymoons and have a great time. Hinata said with a small giggle as Ryuho fainted from happiness. Naruto looked up into the shack and saw Ayame was not there. Hey old man where's Ayame? She is off on her honeymoon with Uruka she'll be back in a week. Hanada you didn't tell me Uruka sensei got married and to Ayame at that I knew they would end up more than passive flirters, Naruto said. Sorry it slipped my mind, she said apologizing. After their meal they went straight to the Hokage tower to find Tsunade asleep at her desk cursing paperwork in her sleep. Naruto nudged her gently as got a punch to the face. He didn't flinch even though he had just taken on a full force punch by the strongest Kunoichi alive. After realizing what she had done she tried to heal Naruto but found nothing to heal. Thanking Kami for his insane stamina she took her seat and began listening to their report. Well I got to hand it to you boys you really know how to get a job done and more aid of Orochimaru's facilities destroyed 18 liberated villages you have just qualified for the exam I'm holding, she said but that's when things got weird. A yipping sound came from out of Naruto's backpack and out popped Kit who began to run around the room before jumping on Tsunade's shoulder curling its tail around her neck purring and cuddling to her cheek. Don't grandma he doesn't bite he just loves meeting new people, Naruto said nervously. Yes well cute as he may be on to business you three have been elected along with three more to become the very first Sanin squad ever. The altar trio were shocked that they would be part of a new squad but not just any the very first Sanin squad. Tsunade just smiled at the expression on their faces as she petted the young fox kid on her shoulder. Hey grandma are you sure about this I mean Sanin is for some of the greatest ninja that equal the Hokage, Naruto said astonished. Yes I am I already have a match lined up a match against two other candidates and one of our toughest and fastest Jonin if you pass you get the rank of Sanin, she said as two Anbu men appeared next to her one wearing a weasel mask and the other a shark. Itachi Kisame long time no see. Ryuho said as they removed their masks. Hey brats good to see you too and if I don't say so myself it's good to see you brother in law. Kisame said gaining a chuckle from Naruto. Like wise brother but still who'd have thought you'd end up with my sister, Naruto said. Kazuma Naruto Ryuho if I may ask who are the two very pregnant young ladies behind you? Tsunade asked. Both Kazuma and Ryuho pulled Tarani and Yugito close smiling widely. Good that you ask this is my fiance Yugito Raigen, Kazuma said happily. Yugito Raigen, you are both a missing nin and a jinchuriken of Nibi no Nikomanta as of right now you bring trouble with the Akasuki and Kumo you know that right? Tsunade asked. My father the Rakage tried to sell me to Akasuki so I ran and then they almost caught me if not for lover boy here who beat two of the Akasuki's members so you don't have to worry about nothing, Yugito said assuring what she said was true. Fine as of now you are a Konoha ninja and can start active duty in 5 years and now Ryuho who is the lovely young lady with you. This is my fiance Tarani Hitsuguya and her flames of youth still shine bright even if she carries our child, Ryuho said having a lee moment. It is very nice to meet you Lord Hokage, Tarani said bowing as well as she could. Now that the hellos are out of the way Kazuma you are against Kisame, Ryuho you face your old sensei might guy. And Naruto you face Itachi we leave for my personal training ground now. Tsunade said as Itachi Kisame Tsunade and Hinata dispersed in a poof of smoke. Okay Kazuma Ryuho grab my shoulder cause we're ride ladies stay here until we get back. He said as the altar trio disappeared in a swirl of black flames.
they reappeared at a large clearing four miles away to see their opponents were ready to throw down. Okay first match of the Sanin exams are Naruto vs Itachi, Tsunade said as the other moved a safe distance away because there was going to be destruction and lots of it, begin. Hey Itachi let's make this interesting I won't use my altar but you can use anything in your arsenal, Naruto said smirking. Very well but I would prefer you did because this will be boring if you do not, Itachi said as he vanished into nothing. Naruto already had his necrogan active having a all 360 degree view of the area. Itachi reappeared behind Naruto with one of Naruto's chakra anbu blades slashing down making contact. But when it hit it burst into shadows and Naruto was nowhere to be seen until a great yell of. Uzumaki art. Hellfire river. The river of black flames flew towards Itachi as he teleported away taking out yet another clone. But then another Naruto appeared in front of the river of hellfire and with a swing of his sword he yelled. Namikaze art. Hurricane gale dragon. As a raging tornado like dragon rode atop the black flame river making it change directions flying at Itachi as he yelled. Combination art. Dragon river god. As the dragon and river sped at Itachi leaving him no time to react. It hit but before he got the worst of it he teleported away the middle of the training ground. Itachi had several severe burns on his skin and most of his vest and shirt were gone. I have to say that would have finished me but this fight is not over yet. Itachi said flashing through a hundred seals like they were nothing. Fire style. Grad flare meteor. Itachi said as a ball of earth appeared in the sky along with him using Amaterasu the boulder became a black flaming meteor. Naruto smirked as with one swing of his sword his razor maelstrom detached and was engulfed in a vortex of hellfire and wind as he yelled. Uzumaki, Namikaze art. Necro maelstrom. As the vortex hit the flaming boulder both cutting it to ribbons and sending it back at Itachi who took the hit before teleporting away. That was very powerful this has been a pleasure to fight with you but I'm afraid that I must end this. Itachi stated as he teleported into his sky and began to cover himself in Amaterasu and free fell like a bullet at Naruto. I agree I have only have one jutsu that my uncle taught me and it is why my mother was called the Red Death. Naruto yelled as he flashed through hundreds of seals at a speed that would make Guy jealous as scarlet red flames covered his body. Taking off his weights he jumped into the air as the flames around him increased and took form of a dragon. Which collided with Itachi creating an explosion covering the area in smoke. Everyone was on edge as they wanted to know who won. A single figure appeared out of the smoke reveling that it was Naruto helping a tired scorched and tired Itachi to the medics. Winner Naruto. Tsunade yelled as she was stunned at the display of power he showed. Not to mention he just used a jutsu that hadn't been seen since the Great Shinobi War. Next match Kisame vs Kazuma. She yelled as they took their place on the already battered training ground. Begin. Kisame wasted no time as he flashed through a hundred seals creating a large body of water and earth creating a pond like lake in the center of the training ground. Kazuma possessing no chakra fell under quickly. Kisame flashed through another dozen set of seals only to yell. Water style. Shark hunter missiles. As few sharks made of water charged at Kazuma who was trying desperately to get to the surface. The sharks bit into Kazuma's flesh making him cry out all the air in his lungs. But as he began to drown the one word. Live. Raced through his mind. The sharks and most of the water disperse and there stood Kazuma at the water's bare bed in his altar proud fist form. You think a little water can defeat me you're wrong now take this my proud fists. Kazuma yelled as the tail like whip hit the ground sending him flying at Kisame. Kisame has no time to grab his samahada he made the scales on his face thicker as Kazuma's fists impacted to his face sending him down to the ground making a huge and I do mean huge crater. Winner Kazuma. Tsunade yelled as she motioned for Hinata to attend to Kisame's injuries. Next and final match Ryuho vs Might Guy. She yelled as Guy rushed to the field with the amazing speed he was known for. Flowed by Ryuho who had his Ryao's wings attached together secured on his left arm. Begin. Lee my prized pupil you flames of youth shine brighter than ever let's make this a fight to remember. Guy yelled in his own goofy fashion. I would like that but see how you are slower now I would ask you to forfeit, Ryuho asked. And why is that my youthful student? Guy asked watching Ryuho intently as he didn't even look like he moved he was gone. Because I've already won. Ryuho said he held the blade to Guy's neck. 
You have surpassed me in speed and stealth I am proud of you so I admit defeat. Guy said turning around and hugging Ryuhou who went into a Lee moment hugging Guy back as the cured sun said Genjutsu appeared freaking everyone out. Winner Ryuhou as of now I now pronounce you all Sanin let us go back and discuss your team. Tsunade said disappearing in a cloud of smoke as the rest except the Alver trio held on to Naruto teleporting in flame to Tsunade's office. You all did fantastic and shown your own style of the ninja art I have asked if Itachi would lead the group but when he heard you were going to be on the team Naruto he declined so I ask you Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze will you lead the very first Sanin squad? Tsunade asked bowing. I would be honored but don't Sanins have to have a mastery of summoning? Naruto asked as he did not want to be a toad Sanin. Yes well since all you know is the toad which Jiraiya is still the toad Sanin I will let you choose from the other summoning clans. Tsunade said walking over to a vault opening it up to see several summoning contracts. But then little pieces of the floor exploded from existence and formed around Naruto's hand and raised up to reveal a demonic eye. That won't be necessary Madam Hokage as I the king of demons and the head of the dragon clan have decided to give the boy our dragon contract as he has shown he is worthy of summoning members of my clan. Nazariu said as a contract appeared in front of Naruto. Well you are the famous Nazariu king of demons it is a pleasure to make you acquaintances. Tsunade said bowing to the great being trying not to get on his bad side. It is a pleasure as well seen as the boy truly sees you as his grandmother. Nazariu said making Tsunade blush then smile with pride. As I was saying you can summon any member of my clan which is divided up by elements you may even summon my underling my own son Yamato no Ryu. Nazariu said shocking everyone as Yamato no Ryu was the eight tail biju. Thank you Lord Nazariu this is an honor that you have elected me to be the first summoner of the dragon clan. Naruto said signing the contract. Oh but that's where you are wrong you may be a summoner but you are now considered an honorary Ryu so do not dampen your status or defile our clan name we see you as a great asset for the future as you are one of the children of destiny, Nazariu said disappearing. Lady Tsunade what did he mean when he said children of destiny? Kazuma asked curiously. I'll have to get back to you on that as I would have to look through my family's legend tome to find that information, Tsunade said cursing paperwork. Grandma if you hate paperwork why don't you have a shadow clone do it? Naruto asked as Tsunade's head popped up at the statement then running over to him and crushing him in a hug for helping her figure a way to defeat he ultimate enemy the paperwork. She let go of him when he fell to the floor into a withered lifeless husk. I thank you for the wonderful idea Naruto but I'm am giving you your ranks Naruto you are Anun Ryu Henjira, Ryuho you are now Eonsoku Henjira, Kazuma you are now Dongan Henjira, Hanada you are now Aiman Enzeru, Kisame you are now Hujiro Kyubu, and finally Itachi you are Bachi Hitone these are your aliases here on out if you leave the village as of right now I'm giving you all three month leave, Tsunade said dismissing them all. Naruto and the gang went home to both celebrate and plan the wedding. As they got there a very pregnant Anko gave her little brother a huge hug without disturbing her melon-sized stomach. Little bro you've gotten so big oh how we've missed you, she shrieked as she practically suffocated the boy. Now honey I know you're glad to see him but think of the twins you don't want to have a miscarriage, Kisame said nervously. Yeah I know it's just so good to see him, Anko said letting go. Naruto once Agai fell to the ground a withered lifeless husk. The rest of the night was both one big party and an idea passer for their weddings, but they all agreed on one theme they write down so they would remember the next day from all the sake they drank. Not even three days later Anko went into labor with Hinata the one to deliver. She gave birth to two young boys that her and Kisame named Zabuza and Kiorondoto Hoshigaki and they got their animalistic natures the day after as Zabuza had accidentally touched a dragon while Naruto was practicing his summoning and Kiorondoto got his from kid as he was curious about the baby and it grabbed its tail and shoved it in his mouth. Then finally the week came when the altar trio and the three beautiful brides to be wedding arrived they were all separated as it was bad luck to see the spouse before the wedding. But the wedding day came and all three grooms were as jittery as a worm hiding from a bird. The boys made it down the aisle to Tsunade who would be the minister of the wedding. They watched as Kakashi Guy and Aruka walked Hinata to Rani and Yugito down to the trio. The ceremony lasted a while as all the clan leaders were there except for the Hyugas excluding Neji. If anyone has any reason these three couples should not be wed speak now or forever hold you peace, 
Tsunade said as the doors burst open to reveal Danzo the leader of Root and his forces along with the Hyuga elders with Hiyashi leading them with an army of branch members. Yeah I have a reason because none of you will be alive to enjoy it, Hiyashi stated as Root and Hyuga alike charged at anyone in sight. For them this was a big mistake as the new Sanin squad burst into action along with the other clan heads taking out as many ninjas they could. But the battle was bloody and tiring. Naruto was almost out of chakra while Ryuhou and Kazuma were already tired using stage 1 of their alders. Even then they switched to stage 2 and that wasn't enough. But that was when they saw Danzo Hiyashi and a Hyuga elder holding Hinata Tarani and Yugito with Kanai's to their thoughts. Surrender and die and we'll let your whores live to be our slaves or we will kill them right here right now. Hiyashi said even if they didn't surrender they would kill Tarani and Yugito and turn Hinata into a breeding fuarder to keep the tears of rebirth in the clan. This made something snap in each of them as power radiated through their bodies making them glow with their own altar energy from the other side. Naruto's sword came bursting through the wall as his altar formed around his body to the dragon-like creature that it made him look like. But even though he had gone to his third stage in the past but this time was different. Two demonic eyes of that belonged to Nazariu appeared on his breastplate as he said. You are ready for the kachu. Hearing this Naruto's eyes began to burn then feel like they were transforming. If you were looking directly at his eyes you'd see a clashing vortex of power where his pupil and iris should have been. And his body glowed in black light. A piece Ryao's pasted flashed before his eye remembering a sacrifice that had brought him back from the dead once made old power awaken inside. Zetsue dispersed and took form around Ryuho. Then it stated to form armor from his neck up, he got a jacket like guard with two blade like rear guards at the top. He gained an armored breastplate, and the rest of his body had armor like cloth, and at his legs gained armor over the knees down to the feet where blade like shoes appeared. On his wrists, two small blades with crosses in the center formed. And finally, two blade like towers formed on his shoulders as his body glowed silver. Kazuma kept thinking that if anything happened to her he'd kill them all in the slowest manner ever. His lion-like altar formed as his body glowed in golden light. The trio then made their approach. Stop, stay back or the girls die, Hiyashi choked out. The hell they will. The trio yelled in unison as three portals appeared behind the girls sucking them and then closing then reopening behind the fearsome trio gently placing the girls down on the ground. Now that their ticket to kill the boys was gone they began to run like they were being hunted by demons. Ryuho saw Danzo who had had the kanai at his fiancé's neck running to escape. Instinctively he activated his altar's true power as most of the armor disappeared and created his oh so favorite two-sided blade that attached itself to his left arm. With his ultimate speed he vanished leaving seven distorted after images behind him. Danzo thought that with his men surrounding him he was now safe and could get away but that was not true as all his guards literally fell to bloody pieces and he felt a blade pierce his stomach. Then Ryuho appeared before his eyes. You took my soon to be wife hostage and threatened to kill her and had your men attack my friends for that you were evil and evil needs to be destroyed. Ryuho said as he brought his blade thrusting it up taking Danzo's life in the most gruesome and bloodiest fashion there was. Kazuma saw the Hyuga that had Yugito and with a mighty flick of his whip tail he shot towards him slamming the Hyuga to the ground then continually punched with his insane strength. Making the Hyuga nothing but a bloody pile of meat and bones. Naruto took one look at Hiyashi and he was now in front of him. His sword, tail ripped through Hiyashi's stomach. You and you clan have wronged me and Hinata for the last time any last words? We should have killed you the day that beast was sealed inside of you you're nothing but a filthy demon that spawned itself from two heroes. I have heard that a lot in my life but I will enjoy listening to you scream while you burn, Naruto said as Hiyashi was engulfed by hellfire. He screamed in agony till his vocal cords had turned to ash. There was nothing left of him but a pile of ash that blew away in the wind. Then Naruto joined Kazuma and Ryuhou back at the battlefield. How about we end this battle guys? Kazuma asked. I couldn't agree with you more, Ryuho said disappearing with his inane speed. I can't think of it any other way, Naruto said taking flight. Not even an hour later the altar trio had gathered up all the leftover root and Hyugas. But they were thankful that none of their friends had been killed a few minor injuries but still a thankful. Tsunade walked up to the remaining coup, the Ta prisoners to decide their fate but she saw every Hyuga there had a caged bird seal on their forehead. 
The Hyugas need to be interrogated other than that route your fate is death Naruto you know what to do. She said letting Naruto who was just as pissed as everyone else that his wedding was ruined. Naruto bit his thumb flashed through the summoning seals and summoned none then the legendary son of Nazariu and the third strongest demon Yamato no Ryu. Naruto little bro what makes you summon me? Yamato asked. We have quick execution for some traitors that have no emotions and we want you to edge a sphere in them before they become they become your new chew toys. Naruto said making the eight-tailed dragon smile like the demon he was. So these puny humans have no emotions we'll see about that as no being can have no emotion, he said walking up to the root ninja breathing on them then roaring in their faces. The fear on the so-called elite root anbu faces was clearly visible, and the ground beneath them had became damp from them emptying their bowels. This made Naruto and Yamato smile as they did have emotions but only suppressed them. Is it time little bro? asked the fearsome biju. Go ahead chow down you've earned it. Naruto said malice abhorrent in his voice. The dragon grabbed the root forces by their ropes with his teeth throwing them into the air before champing his powerful jaws onto the ninjas eating the hole. Is this all you needed little bro? asked Yamato. Yeah that's all watch out for Akasuki I hate for them to catch you, Naruto said as the dragon nodded dispersing in a cloud of smoke. Naruto and the gang were once again at the blood-stained altar as Tsunade recited the whole ceremony over again. Getting to the end Tsunade once again asked. If there is any reason these couples should not be wed speak now or forever hold your peace, everybody tensed but nothing happened. I now pronounce you husbands and wives you may no kiss your brides. Everyone swooed and cheered as the three couples met in one of the most satisfying yet long awaited kiss. They made their way on their honeymoon in a fashion that no one would have believed if they didn't see it. Naruto had summoned one of his new cousins which also happened to be a wind dragon that cut through the wind as he flew. They all spent on of the best honeymoons that could ever be had. They had gone to wave and were welcomed like heroes as the villagers saw that the man had saved their village from an evil tyrant had returned. They spent two months there being nurtured to their every need even if they didn't want it. They made their way back to Konoha Viva Dragonflight as it was the fastest way to travel. But as they arrived they began to be treated like they had been in wave. Naruto really didn't want it as he wanted their respect when he was Hokage so he could rub it in their faces when he proved he could become the greatest Hokage ever. Two more months of intense training as Sanin by Jiraiya and Tsunade passed and they had become a better team as Naruto being the leader. Naruto was not only an inspirational team leader but he had shown he knew tactics that no one knew he knew not even Kazuma and Ryuho. And he kept showing his amazing skills that he unknowingly known. But if he knew the truth he might have been a little mad. He had access to Nazaria's knowledge Viva Necrogan but now that it had evolved it only made the connection stronger. But today Tsunade did not call them for training or a mission she was giving them something more useful instead. Ok listen up you are the new Sanin squad and as such you will need to hide your faces so I have had these specially made for you, she said as she handed each member a mask. Kazuma had gotten a mask that looked like his altar stage 1 fist only with eye holes. Ryuho got one that looked like Zetsue's face in stage 2. Kisame got a mask of a shark with real razor sharp blade teeth with real moving jaws when you added chakra the jaws moved in unison with your lips. Itachi had gotten a blank mask with the symbol of his mange manginkyo circling it. Hanada has gotten elegant yet suited her little nickname angel of death as the mask was one angle wing representing heaven and a demonic dragon wing representing hell as they connected together to make the mask. But Naruto's by far was the most spectacular when you looked at it you saw the spitting image of Nazaria's main head but since no one but Naruto had seen him in person they were praising the realism of the mask. Grandma how were you able to make this Lord Nazariu has never been seen in this world for over two centuries? Naruto asked as Tsunade smiled wickedly. You're right Brad but he has been seen before and my ancestors had made an image that seemed so real that I used it to make that mask and as for the masks they Hold a few secrets as they cast a genjutsu on your face if it is either accidentally or forcefully removed and they hold a storage seal that when activated they change your wardrobe to suit your sanin title and it may never be worn by anyone else as we have put that useful little seal of yours on each of them and that's not the kicker they are made out of a special experimental material that when worn adding chakra it's like your mo even wearing it. Tsunade explained getting a few nods. Grandma I'm going to need a few of these as they will be destroyed when I activate my altar. 
Naruto stated as Kazuma and Ryuhou put in their complaint about not having any chakra. Don't worry I've got that covered I've had many backup masks made for you Naruto also for there are a few shinobi anbu who do not possess chakra due to a birth deficiency where their chakra coils run enough energy through the body keeping them alive so we have created a seal that recognizes a person's aura through their blood making it almost like they had chakra, she said smiling. Sure enough everything Tsunade said about the masks were true. When they poured some chakra into the mask or in Kazuma and Ryao's case activated the seal with their blood they could see breath and smell as if the masks weren't there. After the gift session everyone went home. Later that night Naruto and Hinata had drifted into a peaceful yet blissful slumber but was interrupted as Tsunade's most trusted Anbu captain Yamamoto as his codename was for she did not want anyone to know it woke them up with an urgent mission summons. The Sanin squad arrived to see Tsunade was hitting the sake hard and trying to calm herself from terrible thoughts. This is your first mission as Sanin and your most crucial at that for the case cage has been kidnapped, she said shocking everyone in the room as they knew the case cage was none other than Gara the Jinchurikin of Suna. Your mission is to both aid and rescue the case cage as in the message from Suna two Akasuki teams were involved Naruto be on guard at all times as they will try to capture you also now move out, she yelled and they vanished. They made it to the gate in record time as they were in a hurry. Naruto not wanting to waste any time summoned his new cousin as being an honorary dragon the leader of the wind dragon branch Finjenshau no Ryu. Naruto it is late and dragons need their sleep so what is it that you have summoned me for? Forgive me Finjenshau but we have gotten an urgent and we need to travel fast or the fate of one of Lord Nazaria's subordinate Shukaku will be captured and bent to an evil fate by the Akasuki so can you take us? Naruto asked. If you asked for speed you summoned the right dragon hop on and hold on for dear life. The dragon said as they got on his back gripping his scales as they did not they were in for a ride of their lives. And they were off and when Finjenshau said hold on for dear life he was not kidding as they were forcing themselves on Finjenshu's back as the g-force was incredible. Not to mention the speed they were going. It was a matter of hours instead of days that they had made it. But not even a second after landing Nazaria's voice rang through Naruto's mind. Kid me and Kami worked out an agreement as I'm not only a demon but I'm also considered a summon so he agreed I can be summoned for 10 minutes once every 7 days, Nazariu said with joy. Good because we might need your help later I can sense the 4 Akasuki members but cannot track them but I do sense a large amount of Jonin level shinobi around them so they are probably packing heavy, Naruto said thinking this is going to be one hell of a mission. They arrived at the hospital as Tamari had escorted them to both the Suna Council and Konkuro who was dying slowly from an unknown poison in his blood from a man named Sasori. You must be the team Tsunade sent but we only sent out the notice 5 hours ago you must have really ran fast to get here this early, said an elderly old man followed by elderly woman. On the contrary we flew here on one of the fasts flying beings alive but we need briefing what is the status of the village and shinobi forces asked Naruto with his dragon mask following his lip movements. The village is in shambles several large numbers of shinobi have been either killed or have had large piles of rubble collapse on them and the only lead we have on the Akasuki's direction of travel in the desert lays with Konkuro who can't even talk let alone take a full breath on his own, said the old lady. I'm and you have a challenge so get to work if it comes down to it use the tears but don't resort to it if it your only option. Naruto told Hinata as she nodded doing a diagnostic on Konkuro. Well it isn't too bad but this person used a very new and deadly poison called strychnine which causes respiratory shutdown and suffocates the body killing them in a very painful way but luckily there is a cure which I just so happen to have, Hinata said as she pulled a small vial and a syringe injecting the antidote into his bloodstream. Naruto smiled looking at the rest of the group. Hujiro Bachi go to the village and Hujiro stop enemy forces that may threaten the safety of the village and Bachi help unearth any shinobi that are buried in the rubble keep your channels on as that is how we will communicate for now, Naruto said as Itachi and Kisame were smiling under their masks as Naruto had just given them a reason to show off. I'm an Aonsoku Dongan you're with me now move out we got work to do, Naruto said as everyone got into position. Konkuro who could move freely to an extent now held up a piece of cloth and handed it to Naruto knowing that he was just handed the biggest lead to find Gara. Naruto bent down enough to whisper in Konkuro's ear. Don't worry I won't let them kill Gara as I don't desert my friends, he said as Konkuro realized who he was. 
He was about to struggle out the name Naruto but was cut off by Naruto as he put his finger on Konkuro's lip shaking his head as he could not let him reveal his identity. What is your plan to search for the case cage um we never got you name now that we think about it if you would be so kind to telephone us? The elderly man asked. Anon is what you may call me and we can use the cloth to track the Akasuki and Gara as I have the best tracking summons possible. Naruto said as he flashed through the summoning seals summoning eight horse sized earth dragons. Hello again hatchling to do I and my tracking team owe this honor? The middle earth dragon said. Hello to you too Chessa I am in need of you and your team's talents to track this scent, Naruto said as he handed the dragons the cloth. After about five seconds they memorized the scent and they were in a frenzy. It would be a pleasure to rack them as this is the scent of the man who killed my brother and I'm telling you now you had better kill him or I'll have your hide. Chesa snarled as she was not a combat summon but a tracker and her brother was as well when he was off on a mission to find Shikaku he was killed. You have my word as I will stake my title as honorary Ryu that he will die, Naruto said as she smiled at his words believing him before sinking into the earth with her team. What is the plan now leader? asked Lee. We wait and pray that they come back soon as that's all we can do for now, he said praying to Kami that Gara was alive. I don't know about you guys but I'm not the kind of person to wait and do nothing so they better get back soon or I'm going out there and look at them myself, Kazuma said fidgeting as he was just itching for a fight. Don't be so rash Dongan this is an important mission and if we so much as make one mistake it could mean the life of the case cage could you live with that Dongan? Naruto asked knowing Kazuma would not answer but only rethink what he said. After about 8 hours Cheza reappeared rising from the ground smiling. I have found their location but it is heavily protected by both jutsu and ninja but these ninja possess a strange chakra that does not feel human, she said marking a place on a map. Were these men wearing masks with breathing tools? Ryuhou asked. Yes but why do yo ask young one? asked the Deegan. Because they're called Iwatoshi they have powers almost like they have altar and they can be above Anbu level. Ryuhou said as he remembered the day he was not so proud of. Well I have done my deed so kill that man oh and watch out they've got some kind of genjutsu on the boulder that seals them in. Cheza said disappearing in a poof of smoke. Okay team we move out. Naruto yelled as they took off at speeds that equaled guy without his weights on. They ran what seemed like an hour even at top speed as they arrived at a boulder blocking a cave entrance with at least 20 guards blocking it. They knew the battle would be big so they decided that no would be the best time to change to Sanin attire that they had never worn and that they never thought about using till now. But first they needed Kisame and Itachi. Hujiro Bachi to you copy? Yes leader we copy? said Itachi. Good signing up and get to our O session you'll know where we are as soon as I let off a chakra flare then teleport over here and create a distraction. Understood, Itachi said as he relayed the orders to Kisame. The seal on the inside of their masks activated changing their outfits to something new. Instead of the Anbu uniform they always wore they were both wearing plated mesh undershirts with Anbu grade armored shirts and cloaks like their old Akasuki ones but this time they had the design of Nazariu on the back but also the leaf symbol but even so they both differed from each other. As for Itachi's was pure white with the mange manginkyo symbol on the back circling the other two designs. Kisami's was blue waves with shark bite designs in the front. As soon as they felt the flare they were gone. Naruto Kazuma Ryuho and Hanada's Sanin forms were amazing Kazuma's being like his old one only made with tiny titanium threats to make it fire water and blade proof and on top of that the jacket once happened a time being his old worn out black leather was now a glorious gold and orange. Ryao's was just as nice as in the same way the outfit was made out of the titanium threads as the shirt covered most of his body and was long sleeved and had the Konoha symbol on both sleeves. And the design on the back was spectacular. A cheetah taking on Nazariu in a test of speed. And his Anbu grade pants that had armor at the knees and gravity seals taking place of his weights. A. N. Okay, think of his old outfit only black and with my extra. Hanada's was beautiful but deadly looking as it was a battle kimono that looked almost like robes of an angel. But the left side was white and the right was black. She had a seals on both sleeves just at the wrist and her kimono was decorated with dragon urums. It's a flower, look it up that added beauty to the outfit. Naruto's was by far the most stunning as it was a work of art in cloth. He wore a black leather trench coat with the Konoha symbol that it looked like it had been written on with blood. 
There was visible black flames at the bottom even though they were black they almost looked alive in fact they were because Itachi had shown Tsunade how to make a seal that used Amaterasu without burning the host or the one holding it or in Naruto's case wearing it. On his shoulders were two heads of Nazariu as they stared in both directions and on the sleeves right at the wrist there were two more heads as they looked like they were devouring his arms but the thing about each head like structure they looked so real you would have thought they were alive. And Naruto had an Enbu grade shirt but it was made out of a scaly like material that no matter how hard he tried to rip it off it wouldn't budge or cut. Itachi and Kisame had appeared so suddenly it took the Iwatoshi by surprise as they killed at least two or three of them in an instant distraughting their thought only foeing after them. But before they could they teleported away to Naruto's position. So are we late? Kisame asked. Nope we were just about to crash their party the Akasuki are having in the cave so everyone grab on to me or Itachi cause we're going for a ride. Naruto said as they took hold of the two and before they could even realize they teleported they were looking at four men one with white hair holding a scythe another man that had his body completely covered a short fat man with dreadlocks that wore a mask over his face and Iwa Nin with long blonde hair that made him look like a girl as he wore a strange device over his eye as he sat on Gara's body like a beanbag chair. This is your only warning step away from the case cage or we will kill you now and not later, Naruto said completely serious. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.